Exposing your body to cold water has a lot of benefits. Here's one of them. It has antidepressive and anti-anxiety effects. In fact, studies show it may be as effective or maybe even more effective than classic SSRI drugs for mild to moderate forms of both depression and anxiety. No joke, cold water therapy, antidepressant. It actually makes you feel better in the long term. But Sal, it stunts it stunts your ability to build muscle. Oh God. Mm, <laughs> There's really only one negative, and it's shrinkage. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else positive. That's right. Justin's like, it makes me more depressed. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. No, so uh muscle building, that's the funny thing. No, no, not if you use it right and if you work out more and if you do it separately from your workout. So that's stupid. That's just a that's just a social media, I guess, hook or whatever. So don't worry about that. Um, no, it's got it's got effects on the body to reduce anxiety and depression. And there's studies that show that's more effective in some cases than those drugs. And you talk about the side effects, right? Oh, you might build less muscle if you do it right after your workout or whatever. There's no side effects at SSRIs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like right. erectile dysfunction and yeah, weight gain and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> no, it's crazy. I mean, do think you, about Okay, so do you think, um, obviously, I think both play a role. Like, do you think there's something to do with it's like what's happening on a chemical level or a bo your body's hormonal response to the stress in the water? Or do you think it's simply, uh, you know, because talking about like depression, right? Like how, like just like how it works with weightlifting. I think a lot of it has to do with just doing hard shit. And choosing it, and, to do it? Yeah, choosing to do something hard, getting through it and accomplishing it. I, the value is there. Is like, like so I don't, like when it, you've seen, the, I mean, obviously you've shared the studies with weightlifting and yeah. how uh, how its effects. I would think that that's very similar to what it is. the, the benefits you're getting it's from both. the It's both. I think, yeah, I mean, it really just builds your resistance or your resilience towards hard things yeah. like that come your way. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's, I mean, there has to be like a massive value to that because that, I know that even from um, like expending a lot of like uh, crazy cardiovascular effort, like for me, like getting all that energy out, like it helps, uh, you know, the rest of the day for me to actually relax and chill. Yeah, no, it's both. It's both. So you'll produce feel good uh, chemicals. Your, you'll, your, your CNS, your sympathetic nervous system responds to cold uh, water immersion by actually relaxing. Um, you actually get some fat burning effects, by the way, there's some, some metabolism boosting effects from doing this on a regular basis to where your basal metabolic rate goes up a little bit. If you do this on a regular basis, I don't think it's this huge effect, but it's a nice selling point. How um, much of the whole brown fat that's conversion? True. Yeah. 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 So, effect, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> brown fat is a thermogenic active form of fat that's used to heat up the body. It's a type of fat that you tend to burn. <clears throat> the white fats much sticks around. And exposing your body to cold converts some of that white fat to brown fat, which is kind of interesting. But I don't like to use, I don't like to sell the fat burning effects too much, right? Because people get weird about that, and it's a minor effect. Like it's not, well, gonna, it's, it's not going to affect you. Like you know, it's, change your it's diet. like how why we don't use that for the intermittent fasting, even though it can be a, a positive side effect. That oh, because you intermittent fast, you also got some, you burn fat because you ate less calories, mm -hmm. and there's there's benefits to it, but. I don't think selling it uh, for that reason is a good idea either. It you know, just happens to be a po another positive side effect. You, you know, what's yeah. interesting about this is as you, I was reading about um, the history of cold water immersion, it goes back thousands of years. Yeah. Like the Greeks and the, you know, um, I mean, uh, one of our founding fathers, uh, Thomas Jefferson, used to put his feet in freezing water every morning and would talk about the health benefits. Uh, but yeah, it goes way back and it's been used in m multiple cultures uh, and, the, and the purported effects or benefits back then, they would talk about invigorates the body, makes you resilient to illness or sickness, calms the nerves. This is what they were saying hundreds of years ago or thousands of years ago. when yeah. they used it. And what's cool about that is you have, it's time tested. And because it's it's present in so many different cultures that didn't communicate with each other, you know there's some truth there. Yeah. Right? If they all kind of discovered this on their own, then there's probably some truth in, into kind of what's going on. And also, this used to be a Western medicine prescription for anxiety. Did you guys know that? Really? Yeah. Early, early Western medicine days, if you were anxious, they'd have you splash cold water huh. on your face. Really? Yeah. Because they find that it helps reduce anxiety. Isn't that Inter interesting? That is interesting. Yeah. No, we don't do that anymore because, you know, we have drugs. I know we've brought it up, but I still am fascinated by it. Is it in Russia where they have the kids go outside yeah, in the snow dude, yeah. and just roll around in there to, 
you know, interrupt their their day. Maybe Doug can find that on YouTube where uh, Russian school children playing I, in the snow. So I wanted to do this with Max, and I just could. I lost. You know, there's certain battles you just lose with the wife, no matter how smart you are. Or <laughs> would you tell her? <laughs> well, I I'm just throw him in the snow naked. Well, you know what inspired me was actually uh, Kyle's son. Oh yeah. You remember that he's They've never given him a warm he's bath. He's never had a warm bath. He had yeah. he had he had he had cold water from from day 1 and they would go out in the ocean in winter time and his kid would be like totally fine. He adapted to it. Yep. Like yeah. it was no big deal and I thought, man, this is but boy, Katrina would not she would not go for it. Yeah, yeah. there's something to that. I remember cuz uh the ocean in San Cruz is really cold, Freezing. you know, if you're not used to it and like when I was a kid, it was no problem. I could be in there all day long. And yeah. as an adult, I'm like <laughs> you got to really like talk your coach yourself up. Yeah. No, you know, and also in in Russia, uh they have a practice of um when they do bathe their kids, they finish the bathing with the cold rinse. So, wow, what is that? Nursery children standing in the snow throw ice cold water over wow. their own bodies. Look at that. That's awesome. That's yeah. gangster. It's That's an old awesome. practice, you know? It's been around for a long time. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Could What's, you imagine, by the way, real what, quick, could you imagine- you saw that here. An American school yes. doing this? Oh, the lawsuits oh God. that they'd oh, have? Oh, God. You made my kids do what? Triggered. Yeah. yeah. Ah, no, it, it would You should have, teach them how to masturbate. What's, That's what we what, do here in America. Oh, God. What's up, everybody? Today's free program giveaway is MAPS oh. Aesthetic. Here's how you can win- Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. We will pick our favorite comment and we'll let you know in the comment section that you won. Also, we got a sale on some workout programs and workout program bundles. MAPS Cardio is 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle is 50% off. And the Bikini Bundle is 50% off. So they're all 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Dude, are you the stuff that's going on with oh. Target right now? Oh boy! The, 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 how much they lose in the market cap already? Nine, nine billion, and it's still going down. It's, you know why? Because they fuck with moms. That's why. That's the big consumer right there. Yeah, they mess with moms, it's, dude. I mean, I, I I really don't understand this pattern with businesses. Like, if you see a business like lose a huge amount of money, like why repeat the pattern? Well, I, I, I feel like the 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 part where I thought went really far was like the Satan thing too. Just like like. It's one. It's one. It's one thing to kind of make the huge aisle and and the the rainbow thing and all the tuck stuff, which is already like that was already kind of established, you know, like the rainbow stuff and like you know the pride, but like they, they just escalated it to to the nth degree. Yeah. Well, so like, yeah, we're gonna go seek out like of all the companies in in the world. Let's have that, the guy who's the, like who's like totally. Let's, let's go find a guy sickness. in the in the in, out of the country who is a, 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 a you know self-proclaimed satanist right who makes you know these pride clothes and let's put it in our target store like that's just weird to me yeah well so you know it's because you got to imagine okay so here's my opinion on this is always like we're a market-based society so you want to sell something the market will tell you if it's a good idea or a bad idea yeah. but there's plenty of things that are sold in the market that do well that I don't disagree with that I don't agree with I mean we sell shit that is unhealthy that's terrible that does well. So I'm not saying that it's good or bad that the market says yes or no. All I'm saying is you're free to try yeah, and then see what the market says. Okay, so that being said, what's interesting to me- Well, that's why it doesn't make sense to me. Yes, like these companies are getting hammered for yeah. going too hard in, in this direction. There's no demand there. Well, well it's, a, it's, it, it's coming from, the, it feels like it's coming from something else. It is. It's 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 not, it has nothing to do with the consumer. It has everything to do with the shareholders and ESG stuff. There you go. That is what they're trying to appease. That it has yep. nothing. You, you don't you have points. to be. You don't have to be a rocket scientist yeah. to know as Bud Light what your consumer probably is. You don't have to be like to know what Target is. Yeah, it has nothing to do with that. that. It has to do with the ESG bullshit pick. and yeah. and them trying to score points with the shareholders. With yeah, that. that's. I mean, but you know, that's a way. That's a very. That's a way of controlling the market uh, from the top, because our markets are relatively free. Um, government can't go in or whatever and say you have to sell this or that. Right. So they kind of found this like sideways way of doing it. Yeah, what what scares me is wh when we start to see some weird bailouts or weird assistance from the government because of the SGS yeah. scores. 
That's what's going to trip me out well, is when you see like, oh, we can't let Target collapse or fail, and so oh, and they have a they have a nine out of ten ESG score. Oh, I so I thought about bailouts, yeah. And so they they come thing. in, and even if it's not like a, a a full on bailout, they come in with support somehow. Listen, here's what's this is the part hmm. for me. Like I look, I'm very pro live your life, don't hurt anybody. It's all good. I don't have to agree with you. That's right. it. Okay. Right. Bottom line, I've always been that way. Um, and I've always will be that way. I don't have to agree with you. I don't have to like you. As long as you don't hurt anybody, stealing anything or damaging someone's property. Yeah. Like do your thing. My morality is based off of my own beliefs and that kind of stuff. And if you're nice to me, I'm going to be nice to you. I've always been that way. Okay. <laughs> here's the, here's the, the strangeness of all of this. Okay. These are little kids clothing and the little kids clothing are proclaiming sexual preferences. Mm -hmm. It would be strange for, I would feel just as – I would think this is just as strange if I put on my two-year-old boy a shirt that says, I love girls or – Right, right. You know, like, yeah, like you're, you're two. You're two. Yeah. You, you know what that is? It's not the kids. The kids don't want that fucking the, – the, the, those messages. It's the parents mm -hmm. putting – like they're showing on their kids. Here's my kid. Check it out. Yeah, here's so my, it's weird. Here's my view on my kids. Yeah. Right? So And so parents – who are very, by the way, target shoppers are, especially in places like California, what there's, and we're seeing backlash even here. Parents are like, listen, this is enough. Yeah. That's enough with like this, this, with, with the kids. That's all they're saying. Yeah. Is, is and, activism ever going to calm down? No. That's what I want to know. No. <laughs> it's too beneficial politically. Well, activism changed from helping people to just being angry. Yeah. It's just angry, upset. Like nobody's having a good time. No. Yeah, that's all I see. And it's like, uh, I don't know, man. And it's so crammed in, in society. Like culturally, it's just like we're just getting inundated from every angle. It's yeah. like, <laughs> well, the best you just live your life. I mean, the best is, thing that we can do is to vote with our dollar. Right. I mean, I think, I mean, I, I, I did that with the, the year in the NBA. I mean, for someone who's such an avid, you know, viewer, I, for a year took off of watching the NBA because they went so heavy in the social justice department. And it was just like, I don't, I you don't know what's funny. About and, you know, that? and I, you know, and here's the thing too, like, and this is kind of, cause I'm like you in this way, Sal is like, I'm not the type of person who's going to make this massive stink and talk all and, ah, and like be all crazy about it. It's like, hey, if someone if asked if you ask me about it, I'll tell you. You know, I'm, I'm not choosing not to watch it. Like, I don't I don't want to watch it. I don't want to support it right now because I don't like the messaging that's going on there. And like, I love basketball. And maybe the, and what happened was they changed after a year of that and and viewership dropping down dramatically. Now they've pulled all that stuff Here's out. Here's the and part so, of that that pisses me off. The part of that was that at the time, now you're not going to hear this because now everybody knows. But back then, people, oh, you're not against racism? Oh, yeah. you must be racist. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> this, yeah. We knew early on that the organization, BLM, was a freaking grift. It was bullshit. It was not what they it's said it predatory, was. predatory, yeah. We know now, for a fact, that's exactly what they were. You yeah. see that they're bankrupt yeah. and they're paying themselves millions of dollars and they do this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. They're grifting on, they attach to something and all these people who are manipulated or just want to do good yep. go out and they take advantage of them. And then the NBA, like all organizations, they just want to appear to be a particular way, not necessarily be a particular way. Yeah. And so that's what they did. Yeah. And, you know, people who are hip to it were like, no, I'm not going to support this. I know what that organization is doing. They're not helping anybody. Well, I told Katrina, I said, for the month of, uh, for all, from now all the way through the month of June, we're not shopping at all at Target. And I think if enough people, make the, just that statement and that move, I think that's enough to, and I, Target's already backpedaling. You know, they already called an emergency meeting and they're already are trying to pivot right now. And so I think if, if the people that agree with that, I think just by simply voting with your dollars and not spending money there for, most people I know shop multiple times in Target every single month. One month of you not shopping there and yeah. everybody collectively regular, yeah. that, that agrees with that it will make a huge dent in a business like that. Bro, in 2008, uh, you know, that's when Obama was elected, I believe. 2008, there wasn't a single politician that supported uh, gay marriage because it was not popular enough publicly for a politician to come out and support it. Okay. I marched in support of the law to allow uh, people to get married uh, because I didn't think it was a religious thing. I said, if this is government and government is saying two adults can get married, then they should be able to apply that to everybody. And I marched for that. Yeah. And that's, I, that's between I, and adults. I supported it and I still support people living the way they want. And again, even if I disagree with it or whatever, I support it a hundred percent. But when you start to over-sexualize shit and go in directions that are just inappropriate, 
Um, like I have, uh, you know, I have an uncle who's, he's, I mean, he's my grandfather's generation. Okay. Yeah. He's lived with the same partner for years. He's gay. Nobody cares in my family. We love him. He's a great guy. You know, he stopped going to some of these parades because he's like, bro, he goes, people are bringing the kids to these. And these are hypersexualized. Yeah. yeah. He goes, naked. that's inappropriate. People are all naked and yeah. shit. Yeah. And little kids are there. It he goes, seem like common sense. He's yeah. like, this is inappropriate. He goes, and then I remember him telling me years ago, he goes, if they don't stop this, they're going to get people to, 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 to lose support. Right. Just because of that. Right. That's what's happening. Yeah. This is not how they're and now back to what you said about, you know, BLM with the with the NBA. People are gonna paint this as uh, homophobic, transphobic, hating people. It's not. It's not that. It's they're going too far with how they're slowly you know, indoctrinating and sexualizing well, children. It's, it's just like, if you don't draw lines, it's, it's just, just like it's pressed further. It's just like the same bullshit with the the, the COVID vaccine. You can't you, you 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 if you were somebody who decided not to take that, you were an anti vaxxer Everything. It's yeah. like wait a second. It's I took the other works. seven. <laughs> <laughs> I took seven other ones. I just chose not to take that one. Like fuck off. It doesn't make no, you an anti vaxxer because you no. you passed on. Dude, the I live in the gray and the nuance. You know, like people just don't want to take the time to like really discuss all the details of all these. Things. I do believe more people. I do believe the majority actually does side and agree with you. I do. I think most people are in that, in that space. I think, but I also think that a lot of people are just easily, not, they don't have a I think they're easily voice. manipulated. They blow yeah. like the wind. Or they're afraid of appearing because if yeah. you, do, if you make everything black and white, yeah. yeah, if you don't support this, then you're this evil person. Right, right, they're right. afraid. Right, right, right. And they're like, well, I guess I'm not that. I, or I don't want my job. Work. Yeah. I don't want, might not like me. Look, I'll, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Like the least, the least interesting thing about someone is there sexuality and gender? Like, I want to know, are you a good person? Right. You know, what are you into? What do you like to read? What do you feel? Like, that kind of stuff. Like, who you're attracted? That kind of, that's not that interesting to me. I don't care. Yeah, no, I don't care about that. No, I agree. You know? Well, I have more controversial stuff, but before I get into right. controversial stuff- <laughs> Yeah, because Doug. Doug's over there. Yeah, right I know. Give, let us- Sweating in the chair. <laughs> loosen up his- <laughs> Sweating. His, his butt cheeks for a second here. So listen, I got something that's not. So I the other day, I was t we were talking about our, our, our kids, and I'm, I'm, I'm in this weird- I, I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me process this on how I should feel about it. But I, I don't ever want to come off as that dad when, when, when asked about his son, like I have like the perfect kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and cause deep down, I kind of feel like that. I'm like, God, dude, I got a really good, good kid, you know? <laughs> and when, and when we, when I talk to other parents and they're like, fuck my kids, this and that. And so like, I'm on this mission, like I'm going to find all the things about my kid that's shitty so I could share. It. <laughs> yeah. so, right. so I'm like, I've been like thinking in that, in that space because I'm like, he's such a good fucking kid. And I don't, I got I, bad news for every, you by what, about that. What, oh, what? So there's a, there's a saying in, and I think it's Sicilian culture that if they're like a great little kid, they're going to be like, Awful teenager. teenager. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jeez, they'll see this. <laughs> so maybe I'll try and make him a little yeah. shit now or yeah. with that. But anyways, I, I just know that there's got to be parents that are like eye rolling when I talk about Max. Like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. He's, he's so perfect. Yeah, yeah, he's perfect. So easy, right? So I'm like, okay. So I had a, a moment yesterday where he was a little shit. And I'm like, okay, I got to share this so people know that he's not a perfect kid. He does these little, he's a little shithead. I also see myself in these moments, which is also quite comical, yeah. right? So I'm home earlier than normal yesterday. And uh, so Max is not home from school yet. And Katrina says, you want to go with me to pick him up? And I'd love to go pick him up because I, it's a surprise for him when I come. I never come, really. And so I pick him up. He's all excited. I get out of the car and come, come get him and put him in his car seat and so that. And, you know, they, Katrina and him have their little routine. Like he gets in the he gets in his car seat. She hands him the first snack. He had to, Then he gets the second snack. And then he's got his music that he gets to listen to. No, I'm driving, right? So I get- No, I get, no routine. You're right. So, so <laughs> I, I get him and stuff like that. He does have his snacks. Katrina has, and Katrina hands him a snack. And her and I are kind of like, we're having adult talk. We're talking. And I have like like light country music in the background. He's like, mommy- Mommy, play play Afro, and he and he's in that phase right now where he listens to like one one or two songs and over and over, oh, fucking yeah. terrible songs. There's like yes. not even a real song. It's like a, it's a dude, a, Cotton Eye Joe. You know how many times I listen yes, to that it's like some song? it's it's a Afro Afro Jack from Madagascar. It's like the worst song ever, oh. right? It's a noise. It's like a circus song or whatever. It's like awful, and yes. and it's like it's you know it's traffic time getting home, and so it's gonna take us a good 15, 20 minutes to get home, and he's asking for it right away, and I'm and I'm like eat your snacks first, and then I'll and then I'll and then I'll, and then I'll and then I'll play it right, and he just he deaf ears me. Mommy, play Afrojack. Like just, you know, you <laughs> care about you. just, just mommy, play Afrojack. You're not in and, charge. And I, I, I pick my. I'm driving. I'm looking at him in the rear view mirror. I pick my phone up. Like, Daddy's driving today. It's on my. It's on my phone. I'll play it when you finish your snacks. Knowing I got two snacks to get through that, maybe I could buy like 15 <laughs> yeah. minutes. Right. Stall, stall, stall. Right. So he, you could see him just eating his snack, and he's like, all he's like all to fume. Yeah, yeah. He's like he's like fuming about it, right? And so there's like silence in the car for like two minutes and he's like angry and he's eating his things and i go hey how, how was school today max 
ignoring me. He no say, way. He, he say, I say, Max, did you did you play with He's your so your son, did you bro. did you play with your friends today? Ignore me, eating his snacks like that. Earth to Max, Max, Earth to Max. And then finally Katrina goes, oh, Max, daddy is talking to you right now. And then he gets this like angry face and starts to cry. He's like, I'm eating my crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk when I eat. <laughs> <laughs> you little shit. shit. That's your son, oh, bro. Oh, God, bro. That's so your son. Uh, yeah. I, eat. <laughs> uh, I, I can't talk when I eat. As he adds the boots in his mouth and he's talking and he's like crying about it. Was it. Little, it was a little protest. Dude. Oh, it was it. a little protest, dude. I'm like, oh, you little shit. Oh. I'm like, oh, God. I'll play your goddamn music, dude. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. I do have like a guilty pleasure though, like I, of like a terrible song that I grew up as a kid like that. I think it stuck with me forever. It'd be interesting if you guys have one, but it's called Popcorn. And it's like the worst, most oh, I know obnoxious. I feel like I remember yeah. that too. I used to just like, when that would come on, I just bust out and dance. We, well, hold on. Did you guys, did you guys have to dance to it in elementary school? Did a guy come to your school? Uh, and have you guys country dance or oh something? my god i don't remember that no i don't know about that but we did have a guy that would like play a lot of um like folk songs and all that that would come when i was class. A, i want to say sixth grade some dude came <clears throat> mr penny i don't know how i remember his name mr. and he penny. came out and he had us all dance mr and then, duncan that was and, mine really yeah okay and he would have us do um what's it called when you hook arms and turn and was that country oh, like do yeah yeah, stuff yeah, like, yeah yeah and uh, we had to learn these dances and popcorn was one of the songs I wow. remember popcorn. I remember the song too. Dude, that's my yeah. jam. Do you guys remember popcorn on the phone? Uh, I do. That's how you that's well, how you call the, the number. Time. Yeah, you call oh, the number. One eight hundred popcorn. Right. Yeah. It's it's is that what it was? One eight hundred popcorn? I think it was just popcorn. Or just popcorn. Yeah. So does that still work, Doug? If, I don't know. So I, for I, people who don't know, back in the day, numbers had letters associated with them. So like one was like ABC, two was whatever. And if you dialed popcorn, yeah, you get the, the time. Yeah, doo, 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 doo. The Pacific Today's daylight time, time is, is yes. doo, 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 yeah, yeah, and that's how we get the time. I think you can it's still right do time. that. I did that not. I did that. that. Time later. Yeah. I did. Well, it's been a long time. Do you also remember this? Okay, never doing being all nostalgia. You remember uh, to get movie times? Yes. You'd have to call the movie theater, yes. and then it was a recording, and you had to listen. You to have all, to go through all yeah, of them. You and missed and, it. Hey, your your song, uh, or your movie, your movie brother comes, yeah. and your buddy's talking to you. Hey, blah blah blah. <laughs> like, oh, oh fuck! I missed the times. <laughs> oh, you gotta shit. listen to the whole thing again. Be <laughs> 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 all pissed, ruined like fucking like twenty minutes just I to get the time. I used to get all creative on the answering machines, you know, for the house. Oh, and, like, yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah, because my dad would get so pissed because, like, you know, his friends would call or whatever, and I'd make some, like, really stupid, you know, recording that, like, would, I don't know. I, I, no, I'm, I'm like, still, I'm still in immature family. like that. I did that. My last, before the one I have right now on my phone, the last one was, like, hello? Yeah. Oh, you're the yeah, yeah, kid yeah, that yeah, does yeah. that? Hello? Oh, I hate yeah. that. Then, yeah. Adam, Adam, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got me. Oh, Believe it or not. You know why? Because that gets me. Any, anybody else that's ever done that, I gets you every time. Every yeah. time. Every time dude. it gets you because it's their voice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hello? Hello? You guys remember uh, three-way calling? When you, yeah. you would get a line. So yeah. Back in the day. Party you lines. One, party line. Yeah. Do you guys ever do this? It was like a chick thing. Huh? You never did three-way calling? No. Really? He only had two no. friends. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't have no friends. <laughs> he didn't have no friends. It, this is our phone. Hey, dude, I'm going to be here. Cool. See you there. <laughs> yeah, shut up. You're I'll so, bring my bike. You're so manly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even talk. That's yeah, how manly you yeah, are. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I was on three-way call. Like, yeah. yeah, dude, what are you watching right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Really, dude? Oh, I got a blanket on. <laughs> Just that he used to beat people up for talking. <laughs> you said words. <laughs> Words are not manly. You're bully. No, we Stop would do talking. We would do three way calling, and you ever did this where you call a friend, you say, "Hey, don't say anything," and then you call the other guy, and then you say something so they say some shit that your friend goes, right, "I'm on the line, bro." <laughs> oh no, that's I told bad. you, oh, that's bad right there. That is some uh, chick shit right there. Up, so you uh, set, uh, set somebody uh, up like yeah, that. that <laughs> no, we used to, we didn't do that. We would do something like, "Hey, do you think you could beat up so and so?" Yeah, I think I could take him. They'd be like, "I'm right here, bro." <laughs> I can organize it at my house. Oh, you fucker. <laughs> yeah. Start fights. Yep. Somebody tried to do All that. All right, so the controversial stuff. Yeah, what do you think oh, about back in. Neuralink? Oh, that's not that controversial. What do you mean that's not controversial? That's crazy. That's not going to get us canceled, but it is cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I mean, I mean controversial as far as like, you know, should we do this or not do this? Not like <sighs> we're going to get canceled for talking about so, it. So they just got FDA approval for human trials, right? Human trials of this. So essentially, it's going to create an interface between the brain and computers or the internet so you could think and search or think so i heard it's... the first one of the first features already is you'll be able to save memories and replay them oh hell really no. you didn't read that no because i know that up Doug. they're targeting um <clears throat> the paraplegic yes and, yes and, yeah so that's kind of, of like the, the entry there. point yeah because 
you know, that's something that uh, if you can solve that, it's huge. But. So here's my, and that's why I got FDA approved is because that yeah. could be life changing. Right, right, right. And, and, and that, well, hundred percent, I'm pro that. But it, obviously, this is the slippery slope, right? Yeah, it's well, like, now, yeah, we've you got get to a talk whole, about all of the <laughs> snowball. Think about how we manipulate people through social media. Now, imagine if it's connected directly to people's brains. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's my my thoughts on it. Uh, we're already entering into a weird time, and it's almost like. What's that? What's that old saying? If you can't beat them, join them. It's like, how are we going to potentially compete with AI or counter AI? Well, I guess we're going to have to combine with AI in order to do it. Because you if we stay, become a cyborg, because if we remain analog, we're screwed. Mm. That's kind of how I feel about it. It's like, well, I guess it's inevitable. I mean, what else are you going to do? Yeah, like you're going to have to like. I'm, I mean, if it's at that level, I mean, I, th I think it's. <sighs> Well, I'm just glad we're at our age where we're at, you know, in, at a point in our lives where we've like, I can just check out. I'm cool. Yeah. You got kids, dude. Our kids uh, are going to be. Uh, well, that. that's the the rate. The only part of my race right now is to make sure that he's set up. That's uh, it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So he doesn't have to do it too. Your son's the gonna, only thing your son's going to come home. Yeah. Like, you're going to talk to him and be like, oh, you're so slow and boring, dad. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, why say like, what are you doing? Are you listening to me? Yeah, I'm checking my emails at the same time and I'm talking to my friend, but it's okay. I can yeah. process all this. Uh, well, there's uh, always a dark side to anything good like that, right? Like it's uh, huge. It, there's, you're, you're so much more vulnerable if you're, if you're the, one of those early adopters, especially, and like people are going to try to find loot, like ways of hacking in and, and manipulating and like, it just, to me, it's, I, I want to maintain this autonomy, this like control of my own thoughts, my own minds. Like I, I, I it just scares the shit so, out well, of me. The just argument is you'll have control over it. Yeah, you'll it, have full control. Yeah, yeah. To sell, here's what I see and to, and more to your but point. But you're feeding in the internet. You don't think you get manipulated? By I, so that? I, I'm, I'm less worried about. It. I'm more. I agree, I, huh? I, it's more going to be like what I think Sal, where, where Sal is going with this is that here's what's going to happen is because they're just like we already see where people are like you know making these like eyeballs that they can see like a telescope and you yeah. have hearing that's like you already have people that are ha hacking their bodies yeah. like this already. Uh -huh. So there's definitely going to be fringe people that adopt this right away, right? That don't need it for whatever reason. Where this is going to get crazy is when that does give them an incredibly competitive edge. And then the others will have to force themselves to decide if you are you going to, are in order to compete, if you want to yeah, be a high, high performing CEO, you want right. to be a top surgeon, you want to be the, the best marketer or programmer. It's like in, and you're getting your ass kicked by the guy who's got the neural link and you have to decide if I want to compete for that job or be a part of this, I've got to adopt Look, it or I'm going right. to imagine someone He's today, on cocaine. I got to get on cocaine yeah. right away. And yeah. No, imagine someone right now trying to build a business who refuses to be on the internet to use right. smartphones. That's right. To do any of that stuff. Yeah. And he's like, that's old. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. The internet's going to kill all of us. Oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to only do it this way. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's going to be really hard. You might be able to do something, but you ain't going to build a business. So that's the position that. That's know, how I feel. I, I, now here's I, the scare. Here's the fear. Yeah. There'll be justifications for that. Here, here's the fear that people, I don't think any, a lot of people are talking about. Knowledge without wisdom is is bad dangerous very dangerous lots of knowledge without like wisdom turns into some really nasty bad stuff there's a reason why you acquire knowledge as you get older and um and not just get it all when you're a child because look what that ends up turning into look at a teenager teenagers have a lot of knowledge oftentimes as much knowledge as an adult but they have zero of the wisdom and how do teenagers behave right so mm -hmm. that's gonna be the fear so all of a sudden i know everything but i don't have any experience i don't have any wisdom around it um, boy, that's gonna that, that'll be an interesting place. I don't yeah, know. yeah. I don't know, man. I guess I start probably the most um, <laughs> what not what's the opposite of uh, optimistic, right? Pessimistic. Pessimistic. You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> you know what though. <clears throat> Here's the barrier: they have to they have to you have to put it in your brain. That's going to prevent a lot of people from doing it. Nobody wants to put anything in their brain. Oh, that's it, how I see this rolling out is exactly what I just said is. Not a lot of people are going to adopt that at first. A lot of people are be like, this is crazy. I ain't yeah. going to do that. Just like someone probably wouldn't take their eyeball out and put a fucking thing yeah. in, right? But when you start getting out competed it, by, in your profession that you love, that you're really good at because somebody has got a neural link in, mm. you will be faced with that decision. Is that in three years, five years, 10 years, or 20 years? That I don't know. If the brain, if they have to install something in your brain, mm -hmm. I think it'll take a lot longer. What I think is going to happen is that's the first like iteration, then they're going to figure out yeah. how to do it where you put on a hat where you have something on the outside and you don't have to be invasive. Then everybody's going to adopt it. 
Because that's still a like fear. A like, oh, you got to operate yeah. on my brain. Like, I'd have to see a lot of people do it before I think it's safe. Yeah, because even like removing it, like, what does that do if you're like neurologically adapted to it at that point, and like all of a sudden you just pull it out? Oh, I don't know. What yeah. does that look like? Are you guys familiar with any of the monkey studies? I Bro, and here's it. God, you know, you start thinking like this thing's gonna be able to record memories. I mean. And then let's say when your your physical body shuts down, and you just switch your, all your organs out, and you add, you know, what I'm saying, and you. Well, fix that's it. what I mean. It's and then now you become the transhumanism thing. This is what's all yes. kind of leading that direction, where it's like, what what do we need our body for? Right. You know, like let's just like be metal parts, and then we can interstellar travel. You, you know what? Humans have speculated the challenges with living forever for a long time. Just look at the stories on vampires, and how tormented they are in the stories. Like right. people know this. They know that. Living forever or not dying isn't right. necessarily the blessing that you think it might be, right? And inevitably, I mean, let's say you're a good person and you're just, um, you know, getting a lot of value and purpose for what you're doing. But now you've extended that infinitely. Tell me you're not going to go to the dark side at some point because you're bored. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, I mean, it's just how it goes. I don't know. This is going to be, this is weird, dude. We're getting into a weird... Yeah. A weird, uh, weird space. Did you find what I was saying, Doug, about the uh, memories? Yeah, they talk about it. I don't see anything definitive about oh, it at okay. this point. It's really for people who have like spinal cord injuries yeah. at this point or vision issues, I suppose. Yeah. But I mean, eventually it's going to turn into, it's going to be a market, right? Where of course. you can do all kinds of different things. Of course. And then the argument's going to be, why not enhance yeah. my body's natural yeah. abilities? Mm -hmm. Well, not? I mean, the, the original argument is like you already have an appendage I mean, that's of your when, phone. When Elon Musk said time, that, like, when yeah, Elon Musk true. said that on Joe Rogan, it was like one of those <laughs> moments yeah. for me when I'm like, yeah, you're kind of right. Yeah. We've adapted with it. Like it's all, you, how many people- It's already an extension of you. Yeah, exactly. How many people are, are it's already like in you um, for a lot of people. I mean, how yeah. often is your, I mean, our yeah. phone's on every one of our hips probably right now. now, now right? I just feel like we've skipped steps. Like, can we just get like the contact <laughs> lens first? You know, like, I don't know. Well, so AR, so there, there's a big push right now. Apple is making big moves right now, I think, in AR. Uh, and so there, so here's part of the argument is, is, is AR, AR, AI, which one's going to take off yeah. sooner and faster. And the truth is AR is more likely to be yeah. adapted because of the point you're bringing. Yeah. You could put it's glasses on. Yeah. yeah. You just put some glasses on yep. and now everything around you. Yeah. Becomes, mm -hmm. you know, like you're kind of in a virtual world, but you're still in the real world. So going yeah, back I to like something like better. Neuralink, <clears throat> understanding human behavior, can you imagine the products and uses that this will have for the average person who's impulsive and whatever? There's going to be pleasure mm. button. Yeah. There's. Gonna, I mean, you're just going to tap, 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 tap. <laughs> oh, you know, I feel good now. Yeah. Oh, I'm sad. Pop, pop, pop. Oh, I feel better. Oh, I'm bored. Now wow. I'm excited. Yeah. Like you're just going to hit buttons and make <clears throat> the brain. You, you know, know what a trip. Um, somebody commented on my my Instagram in regards to my my whole talk about Max with the iPad and stuff because they've they've been raising their kid, utilizing it, and their kid was reading at a, a much higher level and faster and like they had all these positive educational benefits and i said um yeah not no i'll pass and i said and the reason why i said that was because it's not there's another side of the coin it's not just that they're there's they're seeing what's happening to these kids that, that how it's disrupting the way they process their executive functioning yep. their anxiety things like so it's like okay great your kid reads at a, a five grades above mm -hmm. but he's anxious he's depressed right. his executive function right. is off so it's like uh, do, do, those parents that have heard me talk about this and he's less and, physically active I, you know what why i wanted to comment on this because i'm sure there's more parents that agree with this parent that comment right that this person just had and I'm, by the way i'm not picking on this person that's so why i'm not going to point them out or their name or anything but that it's like i'm sure a lot of parents think because their kid is smarter because they're using this ipad you know they read better or they're more knowledgeable with math or with that that it's a positive thing it's like no dude just because that 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 is a one of the side effects potentially is that but there's a bunch of other negative effects that we're seeing that are coming out besides that that i'm not okay with Look, and i and i'm more concerned about those than i i mean i can teach him to read at a higher level myself personally i don't need to have an ipad do that it, with the, the risk that it comes with. Yeah, look, do you want a kid that uh, does math real well, but is anxious, anxious and yeah, irritable, who doesn't know how to build relationships with other people? Right. Now, I'm sure there's a way to use these tools to augment, you know, what you're doing. But you know, when I watched that talk from that woman, there is. You said it. You interact with them and you use it as if it's a tool. So they're getting both. Right. The social you don't put aspect them in front of it and then leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Th that woman. Th that one talk by that woman really <clears throat> blew me away because she said their kids are learning in these artificial textbooks or computers, 
and it's not contextualized in real life. So learning a lesson from a book even or a computer or a, a, a tablet versus learning a lesson in real life, which one is more valuable? And so what we've done is we're telling kids like, and so mm. what you're doing is you're making this kid sit in front of this thing. By the way, kids who are on these things often don't know how to regulate their emotions as well mm -hmm. because they distract themselves. Yep. That becomes their co-regulation tool. Yep. Okay, what does that mean? Coping. Take it away. It's no different than this. If you wore a weight belt all day long, your core stability would develop and rely on the support of a weight belt. Take it off, you'll have no core stability. Take that away and your child doesn't have its co-regulating friend yeah. which is the iPad and they don't learn how to, they don't know how to regulate well, very well. Yeah. This is kind of a tragic story, but, um, th there was a, an incident where there was this kid, uh, where I, where I live up in the Valley who, um, got into an altercation with another kid who was from a different school and he found out he was at a party, uh, up in the Valley and he took the bus, he went up there with a gun and he came looking for him at this party with his gun and he pulls it out. And with what the first, what I focused on was the first reaction from like everybody there, they all took their phone out and they're all like hiding behind their screens and they're videotaping while the guy has a, while the while the guy a, has a gun and he goes right up to the kid, he shoots him in the stomach and then he gets on his motorcycle and takes off. So they, they were in like junior, not junior high, but uh, like, I think they're like freshmen, sophomore in high wow, school. they were kids. Kids, kids. And it was like, yeah, okay. So now you get like footage of the thing. So it's like, they're able to prosecute and all that. But like, that's the first instinct. Right, all right. of these kids at this party. Right, how about someone tackle the kid? Phone. Right? Yeah. <laughs> where's, yeah where's he has a visible kid? gun. Like, anyways, it's tragic. It was a tragic, you know, story, but it was just like a very fascinating to me to see kind of like, this was, this is a cultural thing. Oh yeah. man, that's weird. No, yeah. you're right. That, I mean, no different when like a, a fight or an altercation happens. I've seen, been in places like yeah. this where, you know, someone's getting an altercation on a bus or someone's getting into it at a restaurant or something like that. And instead of going in and diffusing it or stopping it, everybody's natural reaction is pull your phone out and record it. And it's mm -hmm. like, what the fuck are we coming to right now? Like, Go there and stop that. It's like wild to me, man. It's interesting. Yeah. What did Ar uh, we had uh, Arthur on the show, and what did he say about like activism along those lines? He says we have a we have a um uh and um not he used a different word than a massive problem with with activism. Yeah, and, he's like and just, people not going and and he says if you want to do activism that really not only works but also makes you feel better is go help people. Yeah. Versus being enraged, pissed off, recording, posting that mm. kind of stuff. Makes a lot of sense, mm -hmm. you know. Instead of like posting about how mad you are about the homeless problem, yeah, and how physically get up and go help and yeah. go help and make an impact. That's it, man. It makes such a it's so weird. I, I never thought help of it one that person way. help your your local community. Like that's you can have the biggest impact doing that over anything. I, I mean, that's one of, that's one of uh, Jordan Peterson's core messages, yeah, right? Clean your own room, right? Before you go and tell everybody else about what they're doing wrong with their life and how what a bad person they are, like clean your own shit. You I know. know. Go make an impact, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Sorry, anyway, I'll, 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 I want to tell you guys something else that's annoying. Are you guys as annoyed as I am about buy, like going to buy like food or anything, and you pay with your at your phone or your credit card, and they spin the screen around for a tip? Oh yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny? And I'm like, that's I'm looking it. at the dude like, you rang me up. I you bought didn't even something juggle from, or anything. You didn't do anything. Fine. I bought something from here. Now <laughs> it's all of a sudden it's tipping culture. It has become this thing now. Tip me. It, well, what's even more yeah. awkward about like, man, it? Man, we used to have to do some shit. For well, what's thing. more awkward about right. it is they won't right. make eye to... contact. Yeah, they, no, they spin it around and they they look away or they 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 like at Starbucks. Well, especially they, they, if they're not even friendly. They hand right? it to, to start. Like this. And it's just like, like that's so so weird. <laughs> it's so it's weird. so weird, right? It is way and weird. And it it puts me in a weird position because I'm like, am I am I gonna be a dick for saying no because you rang up my bottle of water? Yeah. Or and now I just paid seven dollars for the already overpriced water. Yeah, or, or are you being like weird just for you know wanting that or expecting? expecting it? What I find interesting is always like 15, 20, 25 yeah, percent. It's never like five percent or ten percent. Yeah, the minimum it's, is fifteen. It's like fifteen yeah. percent. I give yeah. somebody 20, 25 percent if they've waited on me. All right, if long. I'm at dinner, but yeah, you know, yeah. I got a coffee at Starbucks, and you want twenty five percent. Now I'm gonna. Now yeah, you may as well build it into the price and just charge me that price. Now full forward. disclosure, I say no most of the time, but I do tip sometimes when the person is exceptional. 
I do too. And I have. So like, like uh, there's this place we go to in Willow Glen. Uh, I'll give them a shout out. Um, El Halal. I'm guilty. Taco for, place. I'm guilty for always. Tipping. So I know I tip a lot. It's, so it's, like, it's a great, this taco place is amazing. Okay. The guilt thing. And we go there and the kids <laughs> that work there are so, whoever owns a place knows how to hire great kids. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to say something right now. Like when you see teenagers working at places these days, they typically are zombies and they suck. Yeah. Suck. I just, I've been, Jessica and I talk about this. Like, what is, how these kids get jobs are terrible. Yeah. Well, anyway, this taco place, he's got these kids working there. They're so friendly. They're so good. Like, they're great. So I always tip those kids over there. But if you suck, you don't even look at me. You ain't getting shit on me. <laughs> you know how many, you know how many, you know how many kids that I've, I've had like ring me up at like these places that have AirPods in? I think that's fucking While they're so working, rude. yes, bro. How does the manager yes. allow that? Like, <laughs> come on. Like, if I wasn't, if I wasn't such a busy person, I'd be like, fucking, find me your boss so I could go talk to him right now and slap him for yeah. hiring you. Like, like, what are you listening in there? It's yeah. unreal. Yeah. And I've had some of them. Like, I'm, I'm trying to communicate with them. And I, I don't realize they have them in there, huh? Yeah, you know, they, they're probably listening really? to our podcast. The like, worst yeah. service. Yeah, yeah, they're listening to my podcast. Hey, that would be yeah. hilarious. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what? Hold on a second. Yeah. Wait, if they're listening to my oh yeah. mind pump. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay, okay, okay. go ahead. You're fine. You want a yeah. tip? Yeah. <laughs> Have you? Uh, uh, so some of the worst. I don't know. This obviously these are franchises, so I'm sure it's not true everywhere. But some of the worst kids that serve me were are Chipotle. On there's this one Chipotle we go to, and I swear every time we go there. I'm like, these kids, bro. They won't look at you. They don't look at each other. They're moving at like well, negative speed. Well, you Chipotle, get right Chipotle, six yeah. people make your burrito. That's yeah. cool, bro. <laughs> I'm fucking serious. It's a six person line to get to your burrito. Really? That's yeah. where we're at now? I need six of you to make a burrito? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, Machines it's, are going to take that job. Heavy handed Harry, dude. Yeah. I always find that guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's one with good service. <clears throat> it's only one, though. It's like I have to drive a little further. It's in Capitola. But yeah, the one that's closer, it's well, mainly it was ruined because like there used to be like a homeless encampment like right oh, by. And yeah. so, you know, as I'm coming in, there'd be a guy like eating stuff out of the trash and like, you know, anyways, it was not great with the kids. Yeah. Let's just say. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, uh, McDonald's, I'm, I'm, McDonald's has already got the whole um, automated. Yeah. Automated yeah. thing going. I mean, it's it's not huge yet, but I mean, it's happening. So I'm the first the person, man. If you do a good job, I'm like, I'll go out of my way <clears> to let you know, let your boss know. But God, that's so rare these days. Yeah, I just talk with my my kids starting to apply for jobs, right? My oldest, mm. and uh, I'm just telling them, like, listen, when what is he going to do? Is uh, he going to work while he's in school? Yeah, both. Yeah, now and because he, now he's out, right? He just graduated. But so what is what does a kid like that get at, at a school? Like, like I know where mm. he's going, so I'm trying to think of like what's out there that he could do. What's he? Gonna well, do? I'm going to. He, he's already covered, right? His room and board is that's covered. You, that's from you guys. School. How do you say so what? And let me. And he gets it. He gets an allowance uh, as part of it, where he has this card that gets so much food. Anything else is on him. Okay. So if he wants more food, wants to go out, do anything else, he's got to get a job. So that's on him. Yeah, yeah. So what jobs? He can get a job on campus or something nearby. Now, is there is there rules and stipulations to that? Or is it just like, as long as you're in school, this is what we're going to provide? Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to get, you start getting shitty grades, you're going you're gonna to pay nothing for your Okay, that's, okay, yeah, so okay, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, come on. That's, that's ridiculous. I understand that. Why would you pay for something? I mean, there's a lot of parents that do. There's there's parents that that's just the rules that like if, as long as you're in school your your parents take care of your stuff. Oh well, it's not just yeah you got to be in school and you got to do you know you got to look like you care and you're putting some effort in. Yeah. And but what we what you pay for includes a certain allotment of food. Anything on on top of that though, you, you know you got to work mm. for yourself. And I, it's not like you can't afford. Obviously, I could pay for whatever, everything, but no, of uh, course. What you know, I, he's right, got. He a, want, yeah. There's a lot of well, no, a certain I, I, so, sense of self responsibility. Yeah. I'm, I'm asking because obviously I'm a long ways from this, but I do think about it, and I think like you know, would I would I pay for all of it? Would I pay for some of it? Like what would I like? Mm. There's got to be some value in actually not even paying for all of it, right? Like there's like some value and maybe even going oh, like, hey, depends. listen, I'll pay for classes or room and board, but food's on you. Yeah, it you depends on the, yourself. So it depends on the, I th okay, so a lot of colleges now, yeah. if you pay for the dorm, you pay for the room and board, it includes, there's, the, I think that like even- cafeteria. Yeah, it includes it. That's so what so, I had when I, yeah. So you can't, school. you can't say, I don't want to pay that part. I think it's part of the package, at least yeah. that's where, where he's going. Yeah. Um, But it, for me, it depended on the degree. If it's a degree that's got market- viability then i'll cover it mm -hmm. if it's got no market value you pay it yourself what did he choose did you, he choose always computer science oh yeah and yeah. engineering oh cool. yeah although it seems like those are the jobs that are gonna be gone <laughs> with AI. no i had this conversation learn about they're ai gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna teach yeah. them ai in there yeah. you know there's well, he, he might it, he think he thinks he might want to go in that direction 
Yeah, yeah they'll of, teach of, them. Of working with, of learning how to work with it and, and yeah, use yeah. AI. I'm I, definitely in that space though right now of like, what's a good first job? Like I'm trying to, to think about that a lot with, with Ethan because it's like, it, I mean, he's 13 and it's like, he's already kind of thinking about like working at this like deli or like doing this or that or the other. So I'm like trying to see like where he goes with it. But yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm like, I want to get him to uh, be a shadow to to construction, learn how to build a house, every detail of it, like from every tons of value trade, yeah. you know, just so at least he like can see like what it takes and 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 learn all that stuff. But uh, I mean, you went I don't the, know if he wants to do that. You know, I'm I mean, like, you went the waiter route, right? That's what you did, right? I think that's I, I think think both. Yeah. Everybody should work in a restaurant. Yeah, at some point. started I mean, at a house and so then I worked to the waiter. I went the I went the agriculture way, right? So I yep. went to a farm. Like that's what I did, right? So I mean, I think both have tremendous value. They do, but oh, I do man. Yeah. people I, skills and, and yeah, and being able to <clears throat> so you get more of that conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah I helped a lot. I think working retail or working a restaurant is important. Like go get a job at Starbucks or somewhere where you have to like appreciate service people yes and yeah. not only that you appreciate them you understand what it's like you have to work with different people you gotta deal with assholes you gotta deal with nice oh, people dude it's society right it, it it's incredible to me like uh how people behave like towards waiters and service yeah people, like it's it like I, I i guess i was baffled i didn't know that because i was just like a you know patron forever i go and i'm just eating i'm just like and you're know, not a thanks jerk. you know yeah. i'm not a dick there's a lot of assholes like yeah, that is. just come in and just yeah like throw things at you, like talk shit to you the whole time. You're like, just trying to help them. Like, dude, <laughs> like, I mean, who are you? It, well, it's just like a, it's a number singer. Right? I think any profession where you have to see a high volume of people per day, it's a, if you're going to see a high, yeah, there's just, yeah. there's just a percentage wise, there's more assholes out there than there are friendly people. So if you see 30 people in a day or yeah. more, yeah. there's a good chance you're going to have to deal with oh. some people. You know, I, I this was morning, jaded for a while. I, of that. I had to get blood work done this morning and I actually drove way out of my way to go to this special, this specific lab court. We've had to do our blood so many times. Now it was like the 13th time or whatever yeah. I had to do my blood. So like I now go to this one place because I like the guy. I like the way he talks to me because every they bust so many people through there. I mean, they must see a hundred patients in a day. And I've been to so many of them. And most of the people are they're rude. They stab me. I get bruised. Like they like they don't talk to me. Like, like it's just a terrible experience like oh, to yeah. do that. And yeah. so I actually drive all out of my way to go to this one place because the same guy that's there and it was I was telling Katrina because Katrina was with me this morning he's soothing and it, you know, well, I, know, I know how you get kind of dizzy when you pick your yeah, arm yeah. a little bit well first. he talks to me so it helps keep my mind off yeah. of it so I do like that you know what I'm saying because yeah. I don't do good he gives you a lollipop and a sticker yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 he says good boy on the way out you know so a little ginger but snap I mean, so I oh, here's Thank a great you. example though right so I, normally when I see him it's actually during the slower times I was there in the morning which seems to be when everybody wants to get their blood drawn and so I'm in there and there must have been uh, five other patients all hustling in, and, uh, you know, at least three of the five didn't know how to check themselves in. One old lady like was so like lost and confused. I was kind of helping her. And, the, and he's like running the desk and he's doing the blood work for everybody back and forth. And, and then and then Katrina asked him to do special things with my, oh, could you send it over here and do, do things that they don't want me to do? And the guy was just like calm about all of it. That's cool. And I told him when I got back there, I said, man, I really, I said, just so you know, I said, come all the way over here for you because- I do this a lot, and I think that, and I get it because you guys got to deal with a lot of people, you know, that don't know what they're doing, that are rude and stuff like that. And for it to not affect you, I said I, I appreciate that. You do, know, do they have to switch the the arm cuff for the blood pressure to the obese it's too one? Too big, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that a great yeah, feeling? Yeah. I always feel good. About <laughs> I don't that. even right? tell them. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. even tell no, them. I let, let, them, let them find oh, out. Yeah, try that one. Yeah, oh, weird. Oh, doesn't fit. Doesn't work. Go Ooh, get the one tight, for, tight, tight, tight. Go get the super extra large one. The one Flex at the end of it. Get the one they put on thighs. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that fits nice. Yeah. I know. Hey, hey, I just read a list today that's kind of interesting. The drunkest cities in America. Okay. Ooh, let's guess. Oh, well. Boston. Uh, I mean, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Chicago. Yeah. That's hold a good, yeah, I would definitely. Well, hold on, because this is what's uh, interesting about it. Ten, seven out of ten Scottsdale of them. And East Coast. Seven out of ten of them are from the same state. Florida. Yeah, I know. You know why, though? It's definitely Florida. No, it's New York. Because the city doesn't sleep, right? No. They're up all night. The no. What? no, no. Okay, so oh, first Vegas. off, dude, Daytona. No. What? So, okay, hold on. Whoa. Miami. Hold on. So drunkenness per city. Let me tell you how they measured it, right? Yeah, okay. So drunkenness per city was measured by the percent of the population that either binge drinks or drinks heavily throughout the week. So four to five drinks in a sitting oh. or 15 or more drinks per week. So literally- Seattle. The most drunk Okay, places. so most popular college city, towns. Because during the week, drinking is college kids. I'm going to tell you right now. Just forget the cities. Are we talking about Guess alcoholics the, or are we talking about the college state? kids? Well, the state, seven out of 10 of them was the same state. 
Wisconsin. Holy yeah. shit, Wisconsin. Why would yeah. you say Wisconsin? Wait, did I say Milwaukee? The no, he didn't. Just, yeah, I'm just no, thinking you know, where, they, where they make beer. You always you know? do good with these Honestly. things. Honestly. Why would you guess? That's why you would guess Wisconsin. Unless it's cold, you know. I mean, I don't know. Just, that just, was a good no, no, wild oh, guess. I, I would have guessed that. 20 he times. No, he, he hit it on the, the nail on the head. Wow. Uh, first of all, well, uh, Wisconsin is seven out of, out of these. Like Madison. Seven out of ten, top ten. But all of them are cold-ass places. Yes, cold. Yeah. Milwaukee. I wouldn't guess that. These people are saying Montana, North Dakota. Wow. Really? But yeah. But we'll, Wisconsin, man, they crush. Boy, I would have failed that test. They yeah. crush beers. Though, Appleton, sure. number one. Oshkosh, Nina. <laughs> All places name. I don't even know. Green Bay, Madison. And then you have Fargo, North North Dakota. But wow. then back to back to Wisconsin. La Crosse on Alaska. Fond, Fond du Lac. There's a lot of uh, like French-sounding places out wow. there. You Claire, yeah, all Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. I would have failed. I would have I mean, went New York. I would have went Miami, New York, Las Vegas. Yeah, I was just thinking like everywhere parties. we've been for spring break, and you know, I would have like, never thought Wisconsin. I don't know. They're what a big ass guess. drinking place. Apparently. It is. It is. Uh, I mean, I've been. <clears throat> up well, there I just a few know times. that like BMI is higher in in those uh, states as well. That's true because it's cold and you know uh -huh. you're, you're indoors. Yeah, and, that's true. Yeah, I mean, if we were guessing like. Uh, Eating fried food or something like that, I might go that direction. Yeah, but cheese, geez, I don't know where you're going. Yeah, you know? I Excellent know where you're going. Cheese, like yeah. <laughs> more impulsive behaviors to deal with the cold, the depression. The, you Somebody know, please yeah, send me I mean, some cheese curds guess, from Doug. Wisconsin. I would, you know, I cheese curds are only there. good. They're only good with the, like you have to eat them in a day, right? Uh, they don't yeah, last very well. That's true. Have you ever had cheese curds? Mm -mm. They're so good. You dude. know what's they weird about good. them? You mm -hmm. know what's weird about them? They squeak when you eat them. Yeah, yeah. When you chew it, isn't that weird? Yeah. They, like you actually, they squeak a little bit. Because yeah. there's an air air pockets in it. I don't know why. Yeah, that's why there's air pockets. Because they're alive. I think it's a texture. <laughs> <They're alive. laughs> ah, ah. No, they squeak. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Uh, yeah. hey, I, wanna, I know that uh, I think we have Viore today. Is it Viore today? Yeah, yeah. It's Viore's today. And I see you're wearing Viore and you're wearing State and Liberty. Yeah. I'm, but yeah, I'm Viore pants. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, but, I'm half. Yeah. So, tell, what's your. Now, have you done the State and Liberty t shirt yet? I wore that one yesterday. You did. I did. Okay, so let's let's. I get, like it. I love it. Yeah. I like it. Do you like one I like, more? So, no, okay, I so, feel like you like the state and liberty more. No, so hold on. So uh, it's okay. We can be honest on a commercial. No, I'm gonna be, be honest. Because okay. okay. I I like state and liberties. State and liberties. They're suits and they're really they're good yeah. formal wear. Bar none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. crushes. Yeah. Athleisure wear stuff like this. That, I don't know what very the hell material they use, but it's like so like workouts soft versus just like walking around. There you go. Yeah, so I walk around and then work out in that. Like that yeah. would be my jam. Uh, okay. Viore athleisure wear. They say that nobody touches them. But but dude, uh, this I mean this is like I one have of the only shirts that's actually like it made me feel like less of a fat ass. Uh, yeah. Well, I haven't I haven't <laughs> not 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 a fat not ass. like full fat. Ass. I haven't wore a State Liberty T shirt. I have all their dress stuff. Yeah, and I have a bunch of Viore. Their, their dress stuff crushes. But yeah, Viore. I mean, like, like if you touch, I just no. It even looks, Jessica said it. She she just touches it. She's like, they have the best feeling material. It's true. No, no, their uh, their stuff is is yeah, fire. They I mean, kill they, it. Yeah, they no, kill everything. It. They, I actually like. I wish I'm so bad. They I know they sent us boxes, and I like this. You know, originally I liked the idea of like us always picking our boxes, but instead they want to like send us stuff to yeah. try, or they have new things coming out. And I, they, they sent me some things that I probably wouldn't have bought, and I but really yeah. put it on. You like it? I did. I know, and I the did. colors too. They chose like I wouldn't wear those normally. I was like, oh, me, that looks good. Me too. Justin's yeah, it like weird. it's salmon. Like that's pink, <laughs> yeah, that's pink. Justin. Yeah, they gave me like this light teal shorts. These the shorts. I, they, they had the uh, the the black spandex underneath, and then they're they're real loose, uh -huh. and they uh, and they were like this kind of teal color. Yeah, maybe Doug, you can look up what the the style is because that's a terrible commercial not to be able to tell people what the the, yeah. the name. I'm not good with the names. Shut off your knees. Huh? Were your knees exposed? Yeah. Nice yeah. yeah, yeah. Ponto or core. Isn't that or... funny how that... Oh, by the way, speaking of that, why Doug's looking the shorts up, um, I have noticed that what's making a comeback is uh, baggy jeans. Yeah. But, I, oh, I was just going to I was just gonna bring that up. Baggy jeans like, like are Like Janko yeah. big? Not, well, not that big. Like, not quite, yeah, but, but getting there. Yeah. We're, we're, I mean, it, like, look at over like my my shoes. Yep. Like we're so there. I was like, driving. Like ready for hacky sack. Kind Bro, of yeah, I was driving home the other day with my daughter and these and high school was out and these kids were walking by and I it's mostly with the girls for, so far. No, I'll show you. Uh, I'm like, you could pick out. I said this. I feel like I'm in high school right now. They're dressed almost identical to how we used to That's dress. Hilarious. Dylan, what's the name of the um? Full what's the circle. name of the uh the, the influencer kid? He's got black hair. Alpha Elite. He's uh, Christian Guzman. Pull up his Thanks, Instagram. Dylan. I just. What'd you say? 
I said, thanks, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Dylan. He's your inspiration. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're yeah. neural linked to each other. Did you guys know that? Go to, <laughs> Doug, <laughs> did you already find my, my shorts? So I'm looking, not in his I'm brain looking at the Fullerton shorts. Can you pull them up so I can they, see? Uh, but they I'll don't have teal. Oh, was it teal you said? Well, like a teal, like a light, real light, light blue look. Mm, they're the only ones I see, though. It has the, like the black spandex underneath. Oh, I hope mm. I didn't talk about something that's not out yet. Oh, maybe you did. Uh, I want you to pull that up, and then I want you to pull up. Uh, Tell me if this is a style here. Oh, I like those. Ooh, yeah. No, those aren't them, but I do. Oh, like okay, those. let me see if I can find some. Those more. are the Fullerton ones. I do like those too, though. I'll get back uh, back to you on that. One. Yeah, okay, like, well, I'm gonna make you do something the else. Teal too. Is, I think yeah, those are them I got right a there. Teal pair. Which one? Go down. Go down. Down to the left. Yeah. Yeah, the one on the very left is one I got. Yeah, That's that cor one. the core shorts. Oh, those oh, are the core, core shorts. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah they the have core. a liner. They don't have the uh, Oh, it's spandex. a liner. It's not like yeah. a spandex. Okay, you're right. You're right. So it's the core shorts. Yeah, yeah, I like the core shorts. I like the core shorts, too, a lot. Okay, so now go to... Uh, I want the guys to see this. You can just send him the link. He'll pull it up. Uh, well, I'm trying to do that. See okay. if I can... I don't know. While where. you're doing that, I'm going to I'm gonna just... And we'll get back to that, I promise, Adam. I'm not trying to hijack you, but here we go. Mm. You want to hear some interest, something crazy? Yeah. Did you know? Okay, so how many people have walked the moon? Do you guys know? <clears throat> how many people? Let's just say it's like 12. Some would say none. 12. Right? <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> it was fake. No. 12 people have walked the moon. What? Do you, do you know how many right. people? How many people? Yeah, you're right. Do you know how many people have visited the Marianas Trench? What's that? Uh, One. Three. Oh, What's, three. What is that? We know less about the deepest parts of the ocean than we do the moon. Dude, I know. It's one of it's the deepest the parts in the ocean. Oh, well, we knew, we've known that. It's we've talked the, about that. There's, isn't that weird? There's like there's species that we still have, uh, that are undiscovered down yeah, there, right? Yeah. yeah, no, there's it's crazy. Isn't that wild? It is wild. The three yeah. people have been down there. Well, yeah. bro, wouldn't you? God, that sounds, well, I guess Terrifying. it's just as scary to be probably up on a moon, too. So. I'd rather go on the moon than Oh, there. so, okay, really? speaking yeah. of the moon, so I was actually like talking to my friends and I'm like, I know I read this and it was, it was valid. It wasn't like pure conspiracy theory, but like my friends just roll their eyes, you know, immediately. Cause I was talking about that. They actually like launched rockets onto the moon to have them explode. And it caused a ring. So it was like a, a, a vibrating ring. It had like moon quakes that, that creates this, like almost a ring noise, like almost like it's hollow. What? Read it. It's oh, popular they, science. Wrote an article oh, about it and everything. Test the, they were the testing the, it? yeah the density of Doug, it. Doug, oh, just go to uh, his home, like that video. But this his, is where the hollow on his homepage, hollow moon, and all that kind of stuff. You get the conspiracy people around that. I was, I was just like, dude, that, a, that tripped me out. That it like rang. That there's a moon base. Scroll or down. Scroll yeah, down. Exactly. Like scroll it's, down. Look at the, look the look star. Down. Look at the pages. Adam right. follows. Come on, scroll down. Scroll down. It's right there. Right, right there. See you. That, that just, yeah, see, see his pants. Oh yeah, right in the I, middle. So yeah, both those. The and and I had just seen it on somebody else, and I'm like, son of a bitch. Damn it! Did I? I don't think I threw mine away. I'll go pull them out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So are they you, sagging them too, or is it? No, just he's baggy? not sagging them. They're yeah. just they're just back to kind of a baggy loose fit. And look at the bottoms. The bottoms are covering half of his sneaker, like wow. we, when we were kids. If I start seeing, you know, what's funny is like, so he's young, right? So he's like, uh, I don't know what Guzman's like. He's probably thirty. Dylan, yeah. you know how old he is. Oh, you know what, dude? It's still in a lot of pressure guy. when you're sitting in that chair, Jeez. dude. <laughs> you have to know everything. Yeah, you got to have the facts I, ready. Uh, if I start seeing people wear those with the 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 shell top Adidas or 30. whatever, yeah. he's thirty years old, right? Uh, yeah, so he's he's a youngster, right? So he's got we got twelve years old. So he doesn't the remember wearing wallet, that. Dude, let's bring him he back. doesn't remember oh. wearing that in high school. Like I just like that picture of him because in that, he did. He wasn't in high school when those were in style. That's I right. know. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Like that. I I like I have pictures of me in a ball cap like that, a shirt like that, and pants like that. Wow. Like when I was like freshman sophomore year high school. You know what else is? Uh, uh, well, this has already been back for a while. Do you remember those shoes? I don't know what they, what are they called? Penny? I don't remember the call. Girls wear them, and they were like round toe black shoes with the strap that comes over mm. they do you remember those shoes that girls wear them all the time now again young girls so my daughter went to the store she wanted to buy a pair i like holy cow that's what you describe them to me again yeah, yeah. they're like black but they're round the, the, the front is round they're leather and they'll just have like one strap over and it looks like a like a almost like a baby doll shoe or something like did that. did you guys did you guys see it called well, i don't know penny penny something. not penny loafers are they no oh, man i'm tripping Let did you guys see that did i show you guys the the cartoon boots that were that are a trend yes right? the red ones that when i was at the i meant to tell you guys i didn't even tell you this That's so stupid which by the way i think it's also really funny to me like so one of the most common things that you see when you when you go to one of these games like the like the warriors game and this is all sports i actually see this at all events there's always like a lot of people that have seats that are like 
you know, maybe they got like the the top of the lower level mm -hmm. of that, and mm -hmm. then they walk because they'll let you before the game they'll let you walk all the way down by court seat, mm -hmm. and they take all their photos. And this guy, I'm sitting down in my seats, and he's he's came all the way down, and he's he's standing next to me, and he's got like one of the ushers like taking photos of him like posing all cool like he's courtside, <laughs> and he's got those fucking red shoes. <laughs> Stupid. On, yes, he's got those red shoes on. What him. do they look like? Is it like Papa Smurf like? Yes, shoes or what? they're they're this big. They're massive like this, and they're red. You haven't seen these? Look at no. them. You know what they no, no, you know what they look like? Uh Matt, what's that guy that cart that video it, it, game where the guy blasts it, people? No, in it, the it's Mass it's, Mega Man. They look like Mega no, no, Man. No, 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 no. It's it's based off a cartoon guy. I forget the name. Let me I'll show you. Hey, these are the shoes I was talking about. They're called Mary Janes. Do you remember these? No. You don't remember these shoes when we were kids? Those. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah those are really dude. popular. Those are like uh, cabbage patch shoes. Cabbage patch. That's what we call them. Right. Astro Boy. Astro, that's what it was. Astro Boy. It's Astro Boy shoes. Look at Doug, pull up Astro Boy shoes so that, so Justin can see these and things. And this is like a popular thing. It right? is a thing that these kids wear. Now, I thought they were going to be <laughs> how expensive. <laughs> that's so ridiculous. You see them? Yeah, I can see it on Doug's screen. Do you got one with a kid wearing them? Yeah, I saw somebody wear these. Actually. You've seen it too. Oh, I've seen it too. They're yes, hilarious. The stupid. Maybe we should buy some. Those of are Gargamel shoes. What are we talking about? They do look like Gargamel oh shoes. Oh my god, too. they are Gargamel yeah. shoes. Yeah, dude. I mean, they're based off the Astro Boy. That's what they're, they're named Astro Boy shoes, right? So they're based off of the, yeah. that cartoon. But you're right, Gargamel had the same, Gargamel. same style. Why don't we? Yeah. We should just buy them. Us three, bro. They're so them. ridiculous. The same thing. Now I thought they were some crazy high fashion like <laughs> thing so where they're expensive and they're not expensive. They're just uh, stupid. You know what would suck if you're wearing but those, I've seen those big it. ass those big ass shoes and then an emergency happens, you have to run. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and fall down. I saw um what's the uh, uh, uh um Antonio Brown wearing them at at a, at a game. <laughs> he was like the first person I saw wearing them and then I've seen Do you guys remember that wear. episode uh, of Saved by the Bell Facebook. where they were talking about how fashion and style start? And they were talking about, I think it was Kelly, and they said you could wear a pizza on your head, and then everybody in the school and she oh, did. she did, and everybody started wearing everybody pizza wore on their head pizza. Yeah. to make fun of. That's what yeah. it reminds me of, like just because someone popular and famous wears st something stupid, and everybody thinks it's cool. I mean, you don't even have to be, yeah. you don't even have to be famous if you're if you're a, in high school, you can influence like that. I mean, That's I did that with, sure. I told you guys that with the PG and E jacket. I got yeah. the first time I wore that. I remember everyone, yeah. was, everyone was like, "What the fuck?" And they were the next year I came to school. Yeah. And like thirty kids had had, were rocking. Jacket. I did the, the same thing. Nobody wore that. Yeah, before. it was with a um, uh, uh, what do you call those repairmen for like uh, air conditioners? Uh -huh. it, it was like this cool like uh, work shirt, and it was just like, and so all of a sudden everybody started wearing work oh, shirts. Right. And then I, that so came thing. I had so the way this happened, okay, is I didn't have a waterproof jacket. Yeah, you were poor. My dad worked for PG and E. He was part of it. Yeah. and he had and he had that. I went to the to the bargain and I, and, bar, and really it was like this. It was like this is the trash. type of kid that I was. I was. Just, Ah, fuck it. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my my attitude was like I don't care. Like I'll, I'll wear whatever. Like I, yeah. I was confident like that. And I it was raining, and I'm like it was a waterproof fucking jacket. So I put yeah. it on and I and I wore it to school. Well, look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna toot my own horn, but uh, <laughs> people wearing wife beaters on. I'm not saying it's not, I'm not I mean, saying look it's at the gyms. Hey, what? Hey, when I the, saw it at the you gym, see the kid, the kid in, the, in in our Facebook group, he called it or I reposted it. Or it was on say? Instagram. He, muscle tees. That's, that's I'm like, oh, is this a rebrand? Oh. This is a rebrand. Hey, bro, correct. those are wife beaters, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we're trying to rebrand. By the way, it. we don't think you should beat your wife. It's just yeah, what the calls. <laughs> yeah, call. and I don't do that. Yeah, yeah. It's just what the shirt they're was. Trying to, they're trying to rebrand it for muscle tees. Dude. Yeah. It sounds sounds it's offensive. Uh, sounds wow. better. <laughs> hey, we got a shout out for today. Dude. I got. I have. I have a a, a book for you guys. So right. I already shouted out the founder podcast. Correct. So uh, I I just started reading. So I'm only like I don't know maybe a quarter or even less because it's actually a really big book. Um, the um, Something Tycoon. Is it the original, the first Tycoon? The first Tycoon? It's a, oh, talking it, about the Vanderbilt? Vanderbilt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you talked about this. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Uh, really, really interesting cool. uh, story. I'm, and already it's got me enthralled by the book. So, I mean, I haven't finished it, but it's it's worth a read for sure. I'm on this kick right now. I was telling you guys off air or telling Doug that I'm going to go through and like read a lot of these autobiographies on all these big founders and stuff like that. See so, what they have in common. Yeah, report mm -hmm. back. Look, research suggests that CBD may be useful for anxiety, pain, sleep, epilepsy, hormonal imbalances, inflammation, neurological disorders, bacteria, and much more. Here's the problem. Most CBD products in the market are garbage. Uh, there's a company called Ned that makes uh, CBD-based hemp oil products with all the cannabinoids of hemp, but it's also tested third party. So it's legit. And by the way, this is the only CBD product I've ever taken that I could feel that's how effective and awesome and strong Ned is. By the way, they have a blend that just came out. It's a brain blend to help improve cognitive function. 
euphoric feelings and innovation. Anyway, go check them out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 15% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Joe from New Jersey. Joe, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, good day, guys. How are you? How's everybody doing today? Doing pretty good. Great. Man. Good, good. What's going on? Great. great. Uh, well, it's a, let me just say it's a great opportunity to speak with you guys. Uh, probably been listening to your podcast, uh, I want to say two years now. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity to be able to speak with you and um, really, really appreciate everything you do and really, uh, really look forward to hear what you've got to say about my issue. So, my, um, my my uh, question is, um, what you know? I, I was just recently di diagnosed with a right hip labral pair. So, um, and the question is, what do I do, or how do I train with it? But a little background about it. Um, probably, I want to say about a year and a half ago, I started noticing pain in my hip, um, really from prolonged walking. Uh, probably on really noticed it on hikes with my son while he's doing Boy Scouts. Uh, you know, probably like a three mile hike. I really feel it in my hip, but I really thought it was attributed to back pain. Um, and uh, so while doing, actually while doing performance, I think it's called the Cossack squats. Um, I realized as I was standing, as I was stepping laterally, I really felt some severe tightness in my in my adductor muscles. So. But then shortly after that, I started feeling more pain in, in my squats, deadlifts, so have you. So went to get an MRI. They confirmed it was labeled tear. So um, really what I'd like to know is, you know, what what should I be doing with uh, a labeled tear? I mean, are there exercises I should be doing or not? Yeah. So, so okay. So um, well, I'll give you some general advice because, you know, I, I've worked with quite a few people with this issue and no uh -huh. two are the same. You, you, you know, some people can do some lateral movements or abduction. Other people find it with abduction. So for uh -huh. people who don't know, this basically is, is what holds the hip uh, socket together, right? It's what keeps the femur in the hip socket. And so you've kind of lost stability essentially is what's going on uh -huh. here. So the uh -huh. best general advice I could give you would be to utilize isometrics. Isometrics Damn. would be an excellent because you're not moving, so you're not going to uh, put yourself at risk for adding resistance with movement. But uh -huh. isometrics are amazing for working on stability. And what you do is you use different pos positions of isometrics so that you do build strength throughout the full range of motion. So what I would do is, for example, let's say you want to build some lateral stability. Well, rather than doing lateral movement, I would place my leg up against something that's immovable, and then I would apply an isometric against that laterally. And work on that, hold that for 10, 15 seconds, and then relax and do sets of that. And then if that, once you get strong doing that, move the leg out a little more and you want to work with, you know, this is just good general advice, work within your boundaries. So move to the part where, oh, if I go a little further, I'm going to start to hurt, strengthen there. And then what you'll find is that limit tends to move out as you continue to work through this progress. So huh. a hip bridge is a great way to work on stability, right? Holding uh -huh. a squat in a comfortable position would be one way to do it. A abduction or adduction with isometric would be one way to do it, right? Uh, a hip flexor exercise or movement where you're doing an isometric with your hip flexor is another uh -huh. way to do it. And so you want to work on isometrics to build that stability. And then again, you can change the angle of the isometric uh, as you get strong in particular movements and again, work within those limits. Yeah, I would, uh -huh. I mean, I would think 99, but there's, probably ways that you'd have to maybe elevate uh to to decrease some of the intensity of a um you know a position like that but uh to kind of work your way towards that there's ways of like regressing some of those kinds of movements and that's in like our prime pro uh program there's there's lots of isometric options in there uh to address the hips and, and all its uh, versatility so yeah you just got to go real slow body weight and intense your body and get that connectivity with the muscles again. And then eventually too, you could even move on to band holds where you, you know, have resistance there and you're, you're fighting its pull away. So like a band distraction, kind of a, uh, you know, type of an exercise. So you can build strength that way progressively, uh, and not go too fast. Yeah, Joe, let me give you an example, Joe. So, yeah, sure. um, let's say you want to strengthen, uh, stabilization from the abductors, right? The muscles that pull your legs apart. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. You can lay on the floor, feet, your knees bent and with your, with your feet flat on the floor, put a strap around your knees and allow your legs to separate. It's called a clamshell, right? So your knees come apart to the point before it starts to hurt. So get to the point where like, oh, if I go out any further, it's going to start to hurt. Get the strap, put it around your legs so you can't go out any further and then press against the strap, not mm-hmm. a band, a strap, press out against it really hard with good technique, good control for 10, 15 seconds, do sets of that. That would be an example of an isometric to help build stability um, in abduction. You can do the same thing with adduction, bringing the knees together. You do the same thing with a hip bridge, like I said before. So just work on stabilizing all around the joint with isometric. You could do that in the way we're sitting right now. So the way we're sitting right now with our our leg crossed is I could could move your knee to that end range where you start to feel it. And then like Sal saying, and then I could just use my other hand to drive against it yep. by by pushing out and then the opposite by pushing in from that same exact position and just as, as intense as you can and and keeping in that position in a, an isometric hole yeah. for like five to ten seconds yeah. but you don't want to move right you want to use the isometric because here's why you're finding a position that doesn't hurt mm-hmm. uh-huh. and you want to strengthen within Stay that there because with, uh-huh. with with when you're looking at like a labral tears are probably quite common in the hip you see this uh quite often in athletes. You definitely see this in people as they get older. And the challenge with them is as you move through a full range of motion with resistance, if a muscle's tight or if there's a lack of stability in a particular area, like that joint's going to want to separate. And that's where you find pain. But if I find a place where I feel safe and I could just apply resistance or uh, a contraction, so I'm not moving, I already know I'm stable in that position. So the risk of injury is way low, but I'm still strengthening. And then isometrics, you strengthen the position you're in, and then you go about 20 degrees uh, outside of it. That's where the strength carries. So uh-huh. if I'm pressing out against that strap, I'm going to get strong in that position, but I'm also going to get 20 degrees outside of it and 20 degrees inside of it. And so what mm-hmm. I do is I just move and do isometrics through that range of motion um, to strengthen the entire range of motion. But again, what you'll find is you'll be able to challenge that that end range more and more as you feel more stable. I, I would uh, map symmetry is yeah. the program I would give you. Right. Um, right. And, and you can kind of customize it for some of the movements that we're talking specifically about for the isometric portion. And then I would also put a little tweakly. So if I was, uh, if it was able to pain free, do a, a lunge with you or a step up, I would add stability component always in that. So here's an example of where like maybe in the past you've heard trainers mock like, oh, all this, like, you know, step up to balance or lunge to balance. But for you, it makes a lot of sense to do that. So I, if I would do a lunge or a walking lunge with you, I wouldn't just do a traditional walking lunge. I would create a stability component at, at the top of the lunge every single yeah. time. Same thing with the step up. I wouldn't just step up on a box. I would step up to a to stabilize. Yeah, every time. Now, now, here's the here's the place. Uh, here's where I'm going to um, I'm going to warn you a little bit. OK is uh, you, you depending on how bad this is for you, get really good at the isometrics before you do anything full range of motion with stability. I was going to say, stay in phase one. If you do symmetry, yeah. you stay uh-huh. there, you know, an extended amount of time if you still need that For the work. lower body. Yeah, if you don't feel like it's, you know, really holding strong and stabilizing, you got to kind of And making sure work. it's pain free, right? I mean, right. that's really the component. Yes. Before you move on to the actual movement yeah. portion. Yes, because yeah. what will happen if you don't is if you're strengthening and you feel a little bit of pain, you're actually encouraging uh, instability uh, for yourself. So, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. would I would master the isometrics in different positions to the point where you feel really good, and then yeah. I'd move to like smaller ranges of motion or to small ranges of motion, larger ranges of motion, and so on until okay. you can do like full range of motion. But basically, what we're asking your body to do is to create the joint stability that you had before with muscle. Mm-hmm. So we don't have that. You got to tear in the in your hip in your uh, labral tear. So you're losing stability there. So you got to build it with the muscle. Once you build it with the muscle, then you're yeah. you're going you're going to do well. I, I got to say, it's, it's really funny to hear you saying this because when I was doing um, single leg deadlifts, because I hear you guys talking about it, you know, you want to make it a little more difficult, do some single legs. I'm like, right, let me give it a try. So my left leg, no problem, up and down. My right leg, I am all over the place, and of course, that's a bad hip, yeah. you know. So I was I was a mess. So it totally makes sense. No, you're somebody it's, that it's I would go isometrics. Then I'd go short ranges of motion, uh, like hip bridges. And then when you do like a deadlift, I would go bilateral and I would not go unilateral until you feel really comfortable. 
because it's too much. You're going to be asking your body to do too much. Oh, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that part. I would actually, I would have you do single leg next to a squat rack and use it for uh, to assist you with the stability. You got to really be in a good position because that well, capsule. You, not, is, you don't. You don't need to be loaded. You don't need to be loaded. Just your body weight. Sure. And, short range of motion. Yeah, and you can control the range of motion, and you can inch further, and you're adding just a little bit of a stability component and your safety of your hand. Is on that on that. Yeah, on. My, my point with this <clears throat> is, Joe, is that you're you. <clears throat> this is a because that tear isn't going to come back. It's not going to heal, right? It's right there, unless you right. get surgery, it's not going anywhere. So yeah. you got to be really, yeah. really, really careful about bringing up about building tremendous stability right. um, with just right. the muscles before you do anything that challenges stability a little too much. Otherwise, it's, you're just going to hurt. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I appreciate that, and that that's that's all great advice, and yeah, I think. I'll do that. And I have symmetry. So of course it's been sitting in my back pocket for quite some time as I'm going through all the other programs. But So what you do, so, Joe, with symmetry is do yeah. the lower body uh, isometric stuff for much longer. You can progress with the upper body to the program throughout the program, okay. but keep doing the isometrics for the lower body until you feel ready to start to move to, to regular exercise. All right. Great. All right. Cool. All right. I appreciate that. And, and uh, Listen, I, I, I want to thank you guys. Um, you know, I, I um, used to be a personal trainer a long time ago. And, you know, when I discovered your podcast from, from a work colleague, uh, he uh, he turned me on to you guys. And ever since I'm hooked and, you know, it's always, it's always one of those things where I hear you guys preaching what, you know, you know, your craft and everything else. And, you know, it's everything I learned 30 years ago. And you hear yeah. you guys talk about it. It's, it's uh there's something else. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank so you. I really appreciate it. Appreciate Thanks, that. Thanks, Thank man. you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, have you guys ever worked with like? I'm sure you have. I've had several, and it really and your point at the beginning is important because if you have like just a minor tear versus a like a major tear, it makes a big difference. Yeah, I, like I've never had. I've, yeah. I've done probably like a dozen, and uh, they're never the same. And yeah. also yeah. how strong Very they strong. are in the hips with going into it. Totally. It's, it's just like I remember when I tore my MCL, and the doctor was like. That I remember like going like, man, it doesn't feel like I tore anything. And they explained it. It's because you have so much muscle That's around right. your knee because That's right. you've done such a good job of training your legs yep. that even though you lost this this ligament completely, you don't need it. And, you, and then you don't feel like you're missing anything. Hey, I have a resected, like I don't have an AC joint on my left side, essentially. Um, and my left shoulder is 95% of what it was. It'll never be 100% because that joint's gone. But because I've strengthened the support system, I'm like, I'm, I'm a lot, I'm, I'm almost there. And, you know, this reminds me, if you ever work with someone who's had a dislocated shoulder several times mm -hmm. and that shoulder capsule is just like, you, you got to stabilize the yeah. shit yeah. out of the shoulder. Everything's slow and yes. packed and like muscle tension. That's a, that's the recipe. Totally. Our next caller is Allie from North Carolina. Hi, Allie. How can we help Hi, you? Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You got Hi. it. All right. All right. I'll jump into it. Um, Summer is about to start and I am in the middle of symmetry. As soon as this ends, I was planning on doing maps anywhere because we'll be traveling a lot. I'm running the kids to camp all the time and I might get to the gym once or twice a week. So um, I was going to do maps anywhere, but then <laughs> this week you guys just launched bands. And so my question is, should I still do maps anywhere or should I do bands? Um, I don't want to work out seven days a week. And I know you said on the podcast, bands is for seven days. So I wanted your opinion. Yeah, you got the answer. Yep. Maps anywhere. Yeah. 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 Anywhere. Yeah. Bands okay. is bands is a seven day a week program. Yeah, it's and most it's, effective it's set up to be that way. Uh anywhere is uh I mean anywhere you could scale up the intensity too with with anywhere because we have intensity. Okay. Yeah, we have ways of increasing the intensity on the frequency builder. Yeah, intensifier. So um, anywhere would be perfect for you. Absolutely perfect. You know, that program during the lockdowns absolutely crushed. And we got so many messages from people who did not expect to get the results they got with the program that doesn't use much equipment at all. They thought it was like a maintenance program. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, people actually received quite a bit of muscle gain from it. Yeah. So that's, okay. the, that's the program that you need to do. Definitely. Great. When symmetry is my first program I'm doing um, after bands, anywhere what um when i can get back to the gym what would you say you go to next anabolic. maps anabolic yep totally okay. yep. yeah 100 okay, cool. so the first program you ever got from us was symmetry yeah good choice oh, oh, good wow. for you. Yeah. yeah and honestly Perfect. today i'm starting my first reverse and i've known for years i needed to but um this is all kind of just started this so i'm glad to hear that i'll still make gains using oh yeah anyway. yeah, yeah. Oh, well yeah. ali ali you've never done a reverse diet before 
No, no. How, I've always tried to cut all how, the time. How long have you been working out for? <laughs> 20 years. Oh, you're, oh, you're, yeah, you're yeah. about to have oh, your yeah. entire world life changing. But yeah. I'm like, I'm a binger. So I can, I can cut, cut, cut. And then I binge and then constantly. Hmm. Um, so then I, I, I've been doing, I was doing intermittent fasting and I heard on one of your shows, like the logic that it can work for some people, but if you're a binger, how bad it is. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so I have stopped that. And then I finally, I've, you know, I've been working out with trainers and all that. And so I finally decided to just stick with the program. So then I started symmetry and I thought if I'm going to do this in my head, I know I need to reverse. Love it. So yeah. I'm going to yeah. love it. Allie, I'm going to say your mindset you the, is I'm, perfect. I'm going to sell, send you the um, intuitive nutrition guide uh, as well, because that's going to help you. you with some of your mindset I, around nutrition. Okay. I definitely, I track when I'm, when I'm on, I'm on. And so, um, yeah, yeah. You're, you're doing the whole on the wagon, off the wagon thing. So this will help you quite a bit. So read it, use some of the, uh, the, the mindfulness tools in there. It'll really help you. And if you do a good reverse diet with one of our programs, literally your mind is about to get blown. You're about to be like, <laughs> what the heck? I, I did not know my body would respond yeah. this focus way. Focus on getting strong. That's the main focus. I'm excited. I'm yep. excited. Thanks. Get yeah. strong. Oh, look, Doug, put that up there too. Well, you know, we also have a reverse diet guide. Who, who are you following for a reverse diet? Do you have it all set up for yourself? Yeah. Um, Avatar Nutrition. Oh, okay. They're all right. We'll, we'll send you our, our reverse guide too. So you have okay. something in writing. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thanks for calling in. Awesome. Thanks. Y'all have a good one. You, you too. too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Who's, who's Avatar? Avatar Nutrition? Yeah. Who's that? It's, uh, God, it's someone we know. Out. I'm familiar. No, nah, oh, do Is we it know? for blue aliens? Mark Springer. I don't know. I, don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think if you pull up their logo, we might recognize it. I know the name. Mm. Maybe I'm doing what Justin said. Maybe I'm just thinking of the movie. Yeah. I've yeah. heard of that before. Yeah. yeah oh, I, Lane is a co-founder. There you go. Oh, I knew okay. it was somebody we knew. Okay. Yeah, Lane, they're legit. Lane is he was a co-founder. It. Yeah. He was one of the things he founded it. And I think he sold. Oh, yeah, that was in 2017. So he's. That's what think. he sold. Remember he got out of it and then he went to go do something else. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're oh. legit. If Lane founded them. Sure. Then they got, then they yeah. know what they're doing. So hmm. our next caller is Ron from Florida. Ron, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm happy to be here. It's yeah. uh, it's, it's truly an honor. You guys provide amazing content. Thanks, brother. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so just a little background. I'll jump right into my question here. Uh, 29, been lifting for about 10 years or so. Uh, I put on a, a decent amount of muscle, what I consider. Um, and now, I mean, I've run anabolic twice. I ran uh, anabolic advance, which was amazing. Uh, and I'm running anabolic for the second time now. And I'm just curious... At what point should, if you're trying to cut, so I'm at about 14% body fat, would like to get down to 10%, you know, at what point should you introduce cardio? How much should you do? You know, are you, should you do more HIIT training or steady state cardio? Um, kind of my question revolves around, I understand y'all's, uh, um, the, Philosophy. I guess I understand the muscle building, burning metabol or burning fat you know, high metabolism, more muscle you have. I, I understand that. But at what point do you start to cut and kind of, you know, start to bring your calories well, down? If Look at never do cardio to cut. Now that doesn't mean don't do cardio, do cardio for the health benefits. But if you want to cut, that comes from diet. People who use cardio to cut are, are not using it, uh, are not, it's not effective. Even people who compete on stage, ideally you use it at the very end because your calories are already so low and you're so depleted and you're just trying to squeeze off just a bit more body fat, but where's your calorie intake right now? It's about 2,500. Okay. And you're 167. Is that right? Uh, yeah. You have any idea how many steps you take a day? I, ju I just got a fitness tracker maybe about a couple weeks ago. It's sitting right around 8,000 steps on average. Okay. So this is how I decide if I'm going to introduce cardio. First of all, I want to do most of my leaning out and cutting through, through diet first. So cutting back on calories. And then for me, like my, my numbers, I never get lower than about 22, 2300 calories. Now I'm a, a bigger guy, so that's my number. So maybe yours is more like 1900 or 2000. I never want to go much lower than that. I just don't want to be eating that low. Plus, I need a certain amount of nutrients to maintain the muscle mass of my body. So I have that's kind of my, my number. I don't want to go lower than that. Then I look at my steps and I go, okay, if I'm taking 8,000 steps right now and I want to continue leaning out, next week, my goal is that every single day I'm going to hit 10,000 steps. 
And then the next week after that, I'm like, okay, every day I'm going to hit 12,000 steps through walking, just activity throughout the day. Then it comes to a point when I, and for me, it's around 16,000 or so where it's really hard for me to just add walks in the day to get 16,000 steps. So now I, I actively pursue, you know, at a half hour or 45 minutes on the treadmill in addition to my activity. And it's low, low, you know, uh, list cardio. So low intensity, not going hard at all. Just really, again, paying attention to the steps. I'm trying to hit that 16,000 steps. And so that's how I introduce cardio. It's much easier to reverse out of that once I hit my lean point that I want to be at. So I'm not forced with this hour of intense cardio twice a day, like some of these competitors do. So it's a much better strategy because unless you want to do cardio continually, what will happen is if you do it to get down to your 10% and then you're like, cool, I'm at 10% and then you completely cut out, cut it out. You're going to put all the weight right back on. Yeah. But Adam, I want to ask you this because you did cardio when you competed, yeah. right? And you've already gotten down to at that point, you know, 4% body fat or 3% body fat. So, you know, Ron, you're at 14% body fat. I mean, unless you want to get on stage and you're getting down to the low singles or, you know, mid single digit body fat percentage, I don't think cardio, cardio is not a great way to, 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 to lean out. It's just, a, it's a healthy way to exercise. One of the side effects is sometimes you get leaner, but your best bet is to do this with diet and strength training. That's what's going to get you lean in the most sustainable, most effective way possible. You could also, I so you you went anabolic, you went anabolic advanced. Now you're back anabolic, and I'd put you on performance. You do a yeah, a, a, program, pro, a yeah. program like that. That's more novel. You also have a, a, a phase in there uh, where you have endurance, so you're right. definitely going to burn more calories in your workouts. Built in there, for yeah. Sure. You're doing different exercises. You're not that, that aren't traditional. So all that stimulus is going to end up utilizing more energy, which is going to result in you leaning out. So uh, that's also a great strategy. So cutting your calories a little bit more, following a different program, focusing on steps, you may never have to even do cardio and mm -hmm. easily get down from 14 to 10%. Okay. So, all right, well, that was going to be my next question then. So at what point, so if, if you want to get into the the low single digits or even even say high single digits, at that point, you need to introduce cardio? Or? You know, you don't necessarily ever need to. You could get down. So, okay, you, uh, you're you carrying yourself at 14%. When I was uh, off, uh, when I was not on, in prep, I was off season, right? So and when I was in my phase of putting size on, I actually maintained around 10% body fat, maybe 11 at the highest when I was uh, competing. And then I would prep for a show. Show prep would only be about six to eight weeks for me because I kept myself in that nine to 10% range and I could drop about a percent every single week just through reducing calories yep. and increasing my steps throughout my day. And then maybe the final two weeks or so when I'm assessing my body and I'm getting ready to be on stage in two weeks, I would use cardio because I realized like, oh, I need to get a little bit leaner before. I'm, but I mean, I would get all the way down to six sub 6%, which is, you know, stage physiques for a lot of people without even doing any cardio just by walking and diet. And then, okay. the, the, and and then, then your the, cardio was, was, was what was it? So just, well, more walking or running or yeah. Yeah. Mostly walking. Uh, I never had to do intense cardio. There was no, no point. Okay. I would never want to push my body with intense cardio in a calorie deficit because it sends a signal to the body to pare down muscle. If you're doing intensive cardio, while also in a calorie deficit, holding on to muscles is almost impossible. Yeah, what, what happens? And I'm on a, and I'm on an anabolic steroids. It's still your body is gonna your body is getting this signal yeah. that oh I'm feeding it less and it's asking me to do endurance. We don't need a lot of muscle, so it, all I would do is walk. It'd be an incline right, walk right. At, at the highest bit of intensity if I'm doing any sort of like formal cardio. Yeah, the rest was just done in steps. What happens to a lot of people is they'll do the cardio, they'll see the scale weight go down. Yeah. But their body fat percentage does not go down because they've lost muscle along with body fat. So if you just want to lose, you know, go down in size, then I would say that's fine. But if you're trying to get lean and maintain muscle, I mean, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go back to what I said earlier. Cardio is a great way to build stamina, endurance. It can be very healthy just to increase activity. I'm not anti-cardio. It's just people who use it for, the, for something that it's not great at. Like, oh, I just want to get lean. It's not a great way to get lean. Great way to get lean is strength train and diet. That's the way that you get lean. And the only reason why competitors use cardio is because they exhaust all methods. You're looking at a very extreme situation where every calorie is counted, every drop of water is counted. 
their volume is equated. They're just like at the very end. But I mean, the average person, no. Now, I think they should do cardio for health. I think it's good for you. Right, right. But you're talking about just getting leaner, in which case I'd say no. Don't don't do don't do any. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you just gotta you just gotta keep in mind what the signal you're sending the body by doing cardio while also cutting calories. Uh, there, you, I mean, you, you want to know a real right. real quick way to lose muscle? That's the fastest. Is that's that's the recipe right there? High intensity okay. cardio for long duration, in addition to low calories, is the fastest way to re reduce muscle mass. And so, I'm trying my best to manipulate my program, reduce calories, and. Uh, create more movement like walking throughout the day as much as I can before ever having to use cardio. And if I can do it without ever doing that, I won't. And now the only reason why, it, when you get down to like four or five percent, that's it gets crazy. It gets really difficult to shred every last bit of body fat on you. So that extra push on cardio kind of makes sense. But unless you're getting on stage, you could get down to six percent body fat and never do formal yep, cardio yep. at all. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I've, I've ran, like I said, that program, I've seen tremendous results from it. And, you know, I was one of those that just kind of did the bro split, you know, mm -hmm. never did legs. And then I started doing your, your programs, phenomenal programs, by the way. Um, so then I just, I just decided, all right, well, two days a week for anabolic, you know, maybe I'll incorporate some running just to kind of, I guess, amplify the, the, the burn, but that makes sense. I mean, I understand what y'all are saying. I just, I, no. I was curious if you Did, could incorporate it into a cut, but you know, I, well, could and and most optimal are two different things. Could you? Yes. Is it most optimal? No. Not if your goal is to hang on to as much muscle as possible. And let me tell you what the 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 people that will try and counter this argument with me that are the science nerds. The biggest benefit to this this aspect of shredding out or building muscle that cardio makes sense is when you it hinders your workouts. So if you can't do, you know, say sets of 15 in squats and you're gassed cardiovascularly and your muscles aren't fatigued, then there's huge value in building Big endurance, building endurance in yeah. order to push your body and the weights like that. But if you've got pretty good endurance like that, and you could say do 20 reps of squats with good weight and stuff like that, and it's your legs that give out before your your heart gives out on you, meaning you get out of breath type of deal, then you're probably pretty damn good as far as your your cardiovascular endurance. You people think that you have to get on this like formal treadmill to to be doing something that's strengthening the heart. Uh, you do some supersets or 20 sets of squats, and oh you're going to build some pretty damn good yep. cardiovascular endurance. You know, and I, I would challenge anybody that doesn't believe that to go try that and do that. And so, and that's a much better strategy to leaning out while also maintaining muscle is doing 20 sets of 20 reps of squats, you're going to get those benefits, the cardiovascular benefits while also hanging on to more muscle that way versus you taking that same period of time and getting on a treadmill and going for runs. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I just want to say two things. Number one, uh, I listen to other podcasts and this is a shout out to Doug, the, the, uh, the vocals and the, the acoustics in your studio are phenomenal. I, it's hard to listen to another podcast. Second thing, um, there was like an Aussie guy on this show like two weeks ago, and he mentioned something about how you guys provide like tremendous content about being fathers and stuff like that. And I just want to second that. He uh, he provided a really nice comment to you guys. And yeah, you guys do a really good job kind of, you know, explaining fatherhood and, you know, being, you know, almost father figures to everybody else that are not you know in this in this space so yeah man you guys are doing great thank appreciate you Ron. that's thanks, actually Ron. one of our favorite compliments yeah, to hear that yeah, appreciate, appreciate that it. yeah yeah thanks it. guys hey wait wait did you do you not have map performance uh no i've no i'm gonna have doug send that to you because that's mm -hmm. i think that's that would be a great program for you also so we'll yeah. add, let's, right. let's add that to you great all right thanks guys you got it all right, man. appreciate it Th that this is where we get the the you know this oh yeah mislabeling this that 100 percent in the comments uh, you'll have some fucking some morons, right? Yeah. Listen, cardio is good for you. You should do some cardio. It's healthy. Activity is good for you. It, you should do some, that kind of activity. It's good for you. Yeah. It's it's a terrible way to get lean. It is not a great strategy to get lean. It's not a fat burning button. What, looking at your diet and doing strength training is a much more effective way of of losing just pure body fat. That's it. So if you're doing cardio for the sake of trying to lose body fat. That's, I mean, can it, can you use it that way? You can, but it's not a very effective approach. It doesn't work very well. 
And it often results in, in muscle loss because people of the way they abuse it or, or utilize it. So that's just it. That's just the bottom line. So the question was, should I do, do I need to do cardio to get lean? No. And it's probably not even the, the it's, and it's also not the most effective way. Our next caller is TJ from Utah. TJ, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, not much. What about you guys? Pretty good, man. Yeah, chilling. Cool. Hey, thanks for taking my question and uh, appreciate all the content that you guys put out for us. Um, so I'll just read my question so I can be concise. I'm 42, year old, I'm 42 years old, been consistently lifting for about two and a half years. Uh, been pretty active my life though. I've ran four maps program with the last one being symmetry. And it seems like most maps programs have a heavy lifting phase, kind of heavy lifting, low rep phase. And it seems like, or I, when I lift heavy on the bench, my right shoulder hurts. When I lift heavy doing squats and deadlifts, my back tends to hurt. Usually haps, happens at the very beginning of the phase. And so I can't really lift heavy for the remaining of the phase. I've recorded myself lifting. I can't see any obvious, anything that's um, obviously wrong with my form. Uh, and then I do two to three warm up sets before these heavy lifting. And so I'm just wondering how should I approach these heavy lifting phases when it just seems to hurt me? When, you're, when your low back hurts from your squats, is it the center of your back? Is it the opposite side of your shoulder or same side? It is the just kind of right in the middle. Oh, it's dead. It's dead in the middle. Yeah, TJ. Um, most people, when they go into a heavy or low rep training phase, the limiting factor is whether or not they can perform the rep, or whether or not they can perform the rep in what they perceive to be good form. There's nothing wrong with that, but other limiting factors include pain. So you're going too heavy. You're lifting heavier than your body is allowing you to lift with enough stability to prevent these aches and pains. So I would suggest that when you go into these heavy phases, you drop the weight by 25%. It's, it's just too heavy for your body at the moment. Now, as you practice this, you should be getting, you should be able to go heavier as you get better, but I would go lighter than you currently are. Like if I do an exercise and I feel like I could do more reps, but I hurt. I know I can't do more reps. In fact, I'm doing too much weight already. So you need to go lighter than you currently are. Find a weight that where you can do the lower reps and you don't hurt. And this may mean, or probably what it means is the intensity is much, much lower. You may do five yeah. reps with a weight that you feel like you could do eight reps with mm. or 10 reps, but that's the right weight for you for those low, low rep phases. TJ, and that's how you need to treat them. TJ, are you in the forum? Yes. You are in yeah, the forum. I, am. I mean, I, I would love to see a video uh, of your squats front front and side uh, okay. uh that would that would give us some better better perspective because there, there could be something that one of us sees right sometimes people will, will feel like they don't notice anything or see anything and one of us will quickly see something like the your foot on one side is you know externally rotating or pronating or your right shoulder is is more forward than your left shoulder and so you know those okay. little those little and those little imbalances like that run up the kinetic chain and a lot of times like you think low back and so you're so focused on the back area or something but it's stemming all the way from your foot mm -hmm. or it's stemming all the way from your upper back and like so there could be areas in your in your movement patterns that are off that are causing these these chronic issues that we we need to address too so right and you said you went through symmetry all the way and was, there wasn't any glaring kind of imbalance or anything stability wise that kind of you know pointed out some attention for you you just kind of went to all the way through and and everything was okay yeah during the process um i didn't feel any pain i mean the the barbell bench hurts my shoulder more than the dumbbells. Uh, dumbbells, I'll get a little bit of pain, but it's usually after 24 hours, uh, it's gone. So the dumbbells felt pretty good. Um, it really though, when I ended symmetry in the last phase, I was, I thought I was gearing up so that I could just be powerful, and I felt you know that I was mm. strong. And the first squat. I thought, okay, I could take this weight. And, and actually I'm not, I'm not squatting that much weight for my size. And so, um, 
the first rep was like, ow, that, this hurt. And so I just scaled it back. And I did the same thing with the, the bench. I thought this is what I could do. And I did it. And it just it hurt my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. I want to see. Your, I want to see. TJ, yeah. don't don't make the mistake of saying this is not enough. This is not a lot of weight because whatever whatever the weight is, if it's causing um, pain, it's not the right weight. And oftentimes, how long have you been working out? You've been doing this for a long time. Two years. You said. No, about two and a half years consistently. Yeah, and then before that, were you an athlete? Yes. Yeah. What'd you play? So I I wrestled and played ba- baseball, yeah. and then I've been playing. Old man softball for, yeah. for the last I, twenty I, years. I bet I bet you've got some serious yeah. forward shoulder on Is one your side. Right, right yeah. side on one side. I bet you're you got forward shoulder. Even that, that that's what makes sense why you you hurt when you bench. So here's I'm gonna have Doug send you Maps Prime. Do you not have that? Do you have Prime yet? I I do have Prime, and I use it every once in a while. Okay, so I um, want I want you to be religious about doing Zone One. Mm-hmm. Okay, the Zone One wall test, and I really and just do this for me the next time you go to do bench. Put a lot of energy and effort into that. Like don't just kind of go through the motions. Like really intensify that Zone One before and spend an extra five ten minutes on that and then go do your bench and and see if you notice a significant difference in how your bench feels on your shoulder i i am guessing heavy emphasis on that external rotation really squeeze into it and connect before you bench and see what that does yeah i asked you if you were an athlete because uh it's really it's really challenging when you have a background in athletics especially you said wrestling especially wrestling because I mean, you know this. You, when you when you train as a wrestler, like you, the, what makes you succeed is your ability to just go through suffer grueling, like <laughs> yeah. crazy, ridiculous workouts. And you've done you've done a lot of exercises. You might not have lifted weights, but you did push ups and just all kinds of movements. And right. so you've got you've got movement patterns that are so ingrained in you, and you have this this uh, a, a different relationship with pain and grueling struggle that it's going to be really hard for you to gauge kind of what you're doing, what's going on. Like your movement patterns may be so ingrained that you're like, oh, this feel, this yeah. looks perfect. What's going on? And there's nothing wrong with sticking with dumbbells for a while. How, how's that going in terms of your bench and, and you know, maybe like being more on, in, on the incline bench, for instance, just to kind of place you in better position biomechanically? Yeah, I uh, dumbbells are a little easier on my shoulders uh, or specifically my right. Um, so, yeah. I could, you know, focus more on that Watch with the, with the squatting and the deadlift. So I don't use a belt. You guys talk about not using a belt. And so I don't, is that something that I should implement no, or no, just go no, lighter? No, no that's not going to do it. No, 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 that's no, no, that's no, a bandaid. No. Yeah. All right. So look, TJ, uh, uh, how much weight would you use? Let's say on a five by five deadlift. So I would be like, 325. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Yeah, go 225. Weight. Yeah, that's good weight, dude. Go 225 and slow the reps down, squeeze through the through the range of motion and make that 225 five reps feel hard. Mm. That's what I mean by going lighter. Okay? So take whatever your weight is, go much lighter mm-hmm. and then make it feel heavier by slowing the rep down, by squeezing, by contracting. Uh, through the through the the range of motion, yeah. so you want to make your a l- much lighter weight hard, for even five more reps. muscle tension than you're used to. So yes. just uh, especially if we're addressing too, there might be like a portion of the the rep down towards the bottom where you disconnect a little bit from your core bracing, um, and and this might be like just one of those things. We use momentum a lot of times too when we get down in the hole and we want to spring back up. Um, so to, to do that intentionally and squeeze and, and be very slow and, and again, that lighter weight. Uh, so the whole rep is just this, this big muscle tension exercise. I mean, I feel like uh, TJ, if you're willing to do it, okay. And, and put the videos up on the forum, uh, of your big lifts, deadlift, squat, bench press. I have a feeling that we're going to be able to see more into what's going on. I think we can be more okay. specific with probably by seeing your movement. I, I've got a pretty, I mean. The fact that you were a wrestler and a baseball player for most of my athletes, I had mo- were the most imbalanced 
clients. Oh my God! Every athlete, yeah. every sport. Because you have to, you <laughs> yeah. have to think that okay, when you played baseball, you always, if you're right-handed, you always throw with your right hand, and you throw right. way harder with that side. That creates and that torque and twist. Even in, yeah, on even your back. wrestling, I bet your and, takedowns were with one leg. Like you probably led with one right, leg, right? And you're always forward. rolled forward when you're so, and you do that for years and for hundreds and thousands of reps. You get so good at it, your body forms and shapes that way. And then you go do something where I want you to be like mechanical in a squat, chest up, shoulders back, mm -hmm. and this in this perfect line. You're you're not going to be. You're going to be off a tiny bit. And so there's, I think if I see every see you move, yeah. I think we're going to be able yeah. to give I you. Imagine better. there may be an asymmetrical shift there. That would be my yeah. guess. Yeah, but you know, and again, I'll defer back to what I said. Like I can make a weight that's thirty percent lighter than what I can normally do feel just as heavy. I know, but you, fir but you first need to first break down what's going on so you can cue. Of, of course. Right, but, so let's... But my point with this is, the low. it's not the low reps. It's not the low no, reps. No, yeah, it's not that's, the low reps. It's not the exercise. It's how you move. Yeah. And so lightening it up, slowing it down is definitely the first step. But then the next step is us getting to the bottom of where the breakdown is right. and then teaching you the cue that you need. Like you're... Your cue okay. may be, oh, I need you to have your head up more. Or, oh, what's happening is your right shoulder's rolling forward, so I really yeah. need you to put emphasis on squeezing your shoulder blades when you do that bench press. Like, I, if I see the movement, and, and I'll, I'll have a better a, a better advice on how to cue you. But, yes, Sal's right. Like, it's not the heavy squats. It's that you were, were not moving correctly through them, and it, that's what's causing and the when you go pain. And when you go heavy to a weight that you have that you struggle lifting because that's that's what you think you're supposed to do and oftentimes it is then any deviation any imbalance any lack of stability it just gets it. super crazy. blown up it gets super yeah. exposed i mean you deadlift 320 pounds and if you're off a little bit it's it's not going to feel good now you go down to 225 and you slow the rep down and you make it feel heavy um, you're not going to run into the same problems typically. So, I mean, this is the most valuable part, I think, of our forum, in my opinion. I think the, the yeah. clients that, I mean, because this is the toughest part of our job of, of the communicating on this podcast. Yeah, totally. We're just speculating. Yeah, we're over here guessing with our experience what we see in most people, but it's like you could be totally different. And so having that, and then we have people in there like Dr. Brink, who are their movement specialists. Oh, yeah. Like that is like his forte. Yeah, he'll break it down like crazy. And, you know, he'll be able to take it to a whole other level than we will. So if you tag us and and Justin Brink uh, to see you move, uh, I, we're going to give you much better insight. Yeah. And we'll send you, if you don't have Prime, we'll send that to you. He's already got it. Oh, good. Yeah. You got everything you need. Just need to, just need to figure it out. It's cold over there. He freeze? That? Yeah, he's frozen. Yeah, it's Utah. Yeah, no worries. He's got great hair. It looks yeah. like me. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, I, that's I, I, that. The reason why I kept saying that was it's good general advice for anybody listening. Yeah, no, you're, that, right, right? you're right. You're it's right. It's like, yeah. oh my god, I want to go heavy. I hurt. It's not the heavy. It's that it's too heavy for your ability to stabilize. And you can make a weight feel heavy just by changing the tension. Yeah. And the rep, you know, maintain tempo. control and, and tension. Hundred percent. Bodybuilders do this all the time in order to connect the muscles, but you can do this also to to strengthen stabilization. Well, this is also the camp that like uh, our our friends like the the uh, Jordan Shallows and stuff like that. Like this is the this is their philosophy. Well, their answer for everything yeah. is yeah. is to just lighten the load, practice the movement more. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You lighten the load, you keep practicing the movement, and you get better and better, and eventually you'll create better patterns. But I also think there's a faster way to this if we can figure out. Well, the more individualized the advice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So so if we can figure out how he's moving and what, but I mean, you're a wrestler and you're a baseball player for a long time. Those are like some of the athletes Dude, that had the yeah. most imbalances. So yeah, there's a lot of repeated pattern stress there. Yeah, and and when you say shoulder stuff, like an, totally. on the bench, it's normally rounded forward shoulder. It's totally. like that's what's going on. Look, check this out. Go to Instagram, Mind Pump Media. For under five dollars a month, you'll get a workout every single week. A new workout every single week. It's a Maps workout. Again, Mind Pump Media on Instagram. You can also find all of us on social media. So uh, Justin's at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano on Instagram. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.